Welcome to another episode of the Dynamics of Good and Evil. When the last time we were out and about, uh, the group finally made it out of the frickin' cave, the underpass, and managed to Miranda meander their way towards the Veiled Keep, spotting uh, a few key things that were keeping them at bay till they finally made it to the, to the gate and managed to convince the elves that were living inside that we should be let inside and not just banging on the door. And so now we return to our heroes who are now inside without their weapons and met a curious, curious little guy who I for- happened to forget the name of. God damn it. <laughs> I got it. His name was... Where is it? Where is it? Dirk Ra- Dirk Raidrim. Yes. The uh, apparently the person in charge of guest services. And we're in a very, very tangerine or orange room, you said? Orange. Yes. Very orange room. Yeah. Yeah, I, I distinctly remember we were all complaining about how orange it was. Actually I was. I just yeah. asked, why is it so orange in here? So you guys enter into the room. He's in the sixth dimension again. What now? Yeah, I think he's talking about me. Maybe. I don't know. It was you, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm back. Hi. I got to meet it. It. Good boy, it. Anyway. Yeah, so Dirk has his hands together in the in the in like the pyramid, like so anxious but so expectation like Oh hello Welcome to Guest Services here in the Fey Veiled Keep. I'm Dirk, your most hospitable hospitarian hospitalarian. And yeah, I guess you guys are here to do business, I should suppose. Before I say anything, can I make a perception check? Uh, sure. What I'm looking for is just how how well traveled is this room, considering the fact that the guys by the gate said you do that we do, they don't get many guests. So are you seeing like how lived in this room is? Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. That was a 14, get me. Yeah, I was going to say your passive percent. Well, yeah, it's lowering your passive. So basically, you, you look around this room, and it looks like sort of like a new age office interior of sorts, where there's like cushy little, <laughs> like, not quite beanbag chairs, but you know those like, uh, those chairs that rock, but they basically are like just little slices of leather that just rock on a ground they're they're basically in the shape of like half ovals on one side and like chairs on the inside yeah they're basically like that but they are literally made to look like pieces of citrus <laughs> so like, like, like hollowed oh, out oranges and stuff and there's uh the the lighting in this room actually look at, looks like it's a it's like a grapevine or like a, a citrus vine of sorts that just glows in the ceiling and, there are things in here that aren't orange. Uh, but if you look up at the ceiling, also, there are like there's like a cloudy nature to it, where like it's almost like it's orange cotton hanging from the ceiling. It's it's a bit interesting to look at. Uh, and then his desk is just a straight floating black black and white just granite tabletop, just hanging in midair with completely oh, seal through. Completely see through, nothing, nothing below it. So it's like, just looks like it's just hanging there in midair. You, uh, you really like oranges, don't you? When he squints at this, he leans over to Talek. I think, I think this is what they call one of those themed hotels. Dash was actually asking that, by the way, to Dirk. I can't see much, too much orange. You're actively asking what? 
why it looks this way? No, no, he was actively saying you, uh, you really like orange, don't you? It has been clinically proven that oranges are great for your dark vision. Are they? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm a dragon one. I don't have that. Well, I think it's lovely interior decorating. Uh, are you, are you, are you serious? Do I have to roll deception? <laughs> are you deceiving? Well, I'm technically lying. Are you deceiving? I, I, I mean, I'm lying when I say that I think it's really good interior decorating. And yes, you're deceiving. Yes. I'll just roll it real quick. Jesus Christ! Oh, Jesus Christ! Um, Alright then. He's like, ah, oh, thank you! Someone finally gets this artistic vision. Now, anyway, um, I, I really appreciate it, but I guess we should get you situated anyways, since you're guests of the Fey Veiled Keep. You didn't, you didn't break in, so otherwise, a cellier would have incinerated you before you could even get through the front, uh, the front veggie knives. Oh, good. Well, so we are guests. Yeah. Well, you're, you're not being shipped in here in pieces, so I should think so. First, do you have baths? Please say yes. Yeah. Please his say yes. eye, you see like little After. candles, like little candles go behind his eyes, like, ah! Finally, someone who gets it! He, yes. Well, no, you don't understand. We came through the underpass. Yeah. In, in fact, you might want to five feet away. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> It yeah, was... We're, it we're was we're pretty bad. Speak for yourself, we had to face a bunch of undead bastards. That's why I'm saying it was pretty bad. Some of you still smell like ugh, says Bundle steps away from the rest of the party. <laughs> okay, you don't have to rub it in, okay? Hey, it's, it's, it's not my fault, right? You made that spawn thing explode all over us. Run your, uh, run your stairs at, uh, uh, at uh, Dash and be like, you know, well, you did. You know I can reproduce that, that smell for you, right? He holds up his hands. Anyway, do you have baths? Uh, what sort of heathen do you take me for? Of course we have baths. By, by the... By the cloak of the Lord, why, why wouldn't there be baths in the hospitality guest services of the Fey Veiled Keep? Dash just shrugs. I was not sure of which, uh, which rank of uh, hospitality we are uh, allowed. But, um, uh, question. Uh, do you happen to have any um, moisturizing shampoos and or conditioners back then? Something my oh, hair. we have a plethora of oils and various things you can mess around with in the baths. Upon request, are they, of course. Are they all citrus-based? Uh, well, some. Some are more uh, basic in nature, but... Ah, uh, that's nice. Uh, the, uh, that's perfectly that fine. Here. What's wrong with a simple bar of soap? This just place is nice. It's very, uh, it can be, um, it can help you wake up in the morning. It's just that uh, when you're going to bed at night, it's probably better for a You're a druid! You lived out in the wilds! Yes. And? You don't think I took care of myself? Of course I know you took care of yourself, but you need all this stuff just to take one simple bath? Listen, uh, 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 Rania goes up to Talik and puts his hand on his uh, shoulders, very seriously. Sometimes, you just need to treat yourself. I treat and myself once in a while with a parent! Talik, think of it like this, it's not like you're the one bathing him, so... I mean, you could. Thanks, Bundle. Dash, again, for putting that my thought in his head. You're <laughs> welcome. And, you know what, Rania's actually... Sometimes you do actually have to treat yourself. Otherwise, I, treat with the carrot. I think more than just with food. We all have different definitions of treating ourselves. Look, when I take a shower, that's my treat. I am fit washing my fur nice and clean. Just give me a simple bowl of soap and I'll go from there. I'm just hoping whatever they have helps with things. It's still hurting after getting hit by that lightning. What lightning? 
You know what lightning I'm talking about, Rania. Dude, you're not over that already? That fucking hurt, so no, I'm not over it. Yeah, my fur was a giant fuzzball thanks to you. As I you mean, I had, to heal the, I had to heal the burns. Uh, haven't, uh, uh, aren't you like immune to lightning or something? No, I'm a, I'm resistant to acid. I'm a black dragonborn, not a blue dragonborn, a black dragonborn. Ah. Uh. Oh, let my no go. Yeah. Uh. Well, I can see you're just so agitated, the whole lot of you, but we can we fix that real day. quick. I appreciate this. Now, uh, but before we get get going, we have a... We, uh... I'm debating. No, I didn't have the survey for Redbird, so... So, all I need to do is pick your style of a com of a hospitality. Wait, our our oh? style? What? Style? Yes. What, do you mean? what do you mean by style? Oh, very simple. Uh, do to do. He pulls out a clipboard that has six words listed on it. It's like, oh yeah, you just gotta see here. And if you have any questions, just ask me, Dirk, because I have arranged these styles myself. Classical and I had carved uh, Libra rustic and nuage. What's that word? What's that word for the? An awkward. What's that word? What's that word down there? The one that starts with an N. Nuage is the nuage. traditional fay accompaniment of. Uh, it's very sleek, very. Uh, yeah, new new age. Uh, Run your uh, uh, raise the hand. Nuage. Can we have a tour? Actually, yeah, that would be nice. Tour, then bath, then catnap. Long catnap. All right, we, we have had to... Uh, uh, we, we've only had to accompany a few so far, but we have, I decided to bring upon myself to... Because everyone has a different type of room and necessity they need. Therefore, I took it upon myself to uh, customize for each different type to come through. So... If you'll follow me, and as he claps his hands, uh, two gnomes come from little hidey holes in the walls and just waltz over and just jump on top of each other and take over his spot at the desk while he moves around. Like, oh, follow me, follow me. And he he uh, presses his hand into an indentation of the wall and it opens up, like, just laterally, like, into a hallway. Like, follow, follow. And... He snaps his fingers and a little white will o will o the wisp starts glowing up the hallway, and he he takes you down a short stairwell of about six steps and and he opens up a rock covered doorway that opens up into a little hollow that looks sort of like a that looks sort of like a small glade like there is a a small fountain that opens up into a small running creek and a poolside along with moss, uh, a moss-covered bed, uh, a small, like, dock or raft attached to the the pool area. And, yeah, it's very calming, very soothing, very water-based. This is what we have for uh, when occasionally we have aquan-bastes who stay here, since they need to keep refreshing themselves every once in a while to keep their uh, themselves composed and such. You, I'm sure you guys have met with tritons and the loke. Uh, hang on. Have we? we? I don't know. Bundles. Roll Bundles. history? Uh, Bundles. sure, history. Alright. Yeah. Straight history from everybody. I might have. <laughs> What's a trident? Go ahead. Go ahead, Bundle. Yeah, Dashkin, you're thinking like, a, a trident? Like, the, those... You have, you have sentient weapons come through here? What? All right. Um. So bundle, bundle. You have this big, wide smile on your face. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talik, 
Talek, Rania, and Fel, you you guys ha- know what Tritons and Sagan are. They're they're merfolk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I rolled that for a different reason. Yeah. What what were you? You got to tell me these things. I was trying to say it, but everyone was talking. Oh okay. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was rolling this deception because it's part of his history. Um, so he, he definitely knows what one is. That's right. But... <laughs> Brain fart. <Yeah. laughs> so he's trying to play it off like, no, no, I don't know. Yeah, that ain't working. Yeah, no. Not. Your head says no, but your eyes say yes. <laughs> I can't and your sheepish help grin. Sheep. Oh, You're trying hard to hide that sheepish grin on your face, but it hasn't quite worked on Dirk. He's like, hmm, hmm. But yes, uh, merfolk those like. And this is their preferred living space. We got a little bit, we, you can choose between a raft or a dock to uh, like rest. Uh, there's a sunken version, sort of like certain fish bowls. Where they just can relax in there, but the boat won't sink unless they want it to. They have like weights and coal they can load it, they can ballast it out with. Do you have anything that might be sort of arid or savannah ish? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked because ne- uh, next on ours is the classical. And I'm going to ask you to follow me out. Follow me out. We do so. Uh, he open. He follows you. He follows the will of the wisp out the small stairwell down the hallway to the left this time, and he comes to a standard just wooden door, and he opens it up, and it looks like a standard in room. It's got like, uh, we have choice of hay or feathers for bedding. We ha- it's got like a small. It's like it's like a small bedside table, a uh, writing desk, a. Uh, a uh, a tap for water and one we also have an optional tap for the more uh, alcoholic crowd if you wish although we do not currently have access to whiskey or rum we only have wine and uh, beer yes. at the moment yes I'm cool with that uh, so yeah we got the standard uh, I believe which is what the uh, the other humanoids typically enjoy in the uh, cities I haven't been there myself, but I hear great stories. Like there are there are pictures on the wall of stick figures, like just having a good time. It's a, I, I assume that's that's what they they uh, they bless the walls with. But um, uh, they usually put that in the fridge. But yes, and dark. We, we're gonna, what the hell's we're a gonna... fridge? Mm, it's an ice box. They put uh, cold things in there for storage. We're not creating a fridge. Why? Icebox. Why? Iceboxes are a thing, but mm-hmm. Jesus, <laughs> would they be expensive? At least in D and D. Yeah, imagine that. Uh, like the more uh, like fancier ones would have like an ice elemental or a minor ice elemental. Or a wizard. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and there's also a basin over by the side next to the the tap for the water and the optional one for the beer and the wine. And he's like, yeah, it's stand, stand. I hear this is standard for humanoids of the of the overworld, in the uh, civilized, uh, quote unquote, civilized aspect of uh, them. But anyway, next Seems up legit. is next up is hand carved, and he exits out. And this time, you descend, you ascend upwards, uh, a uh, slight slope, into a cavernous location where it looks very much like a room just carved out of stone there are like st- there are like artificial stalac- stalactites in the ceiling that give a slight ambiance ambiance of like dripping and just candlelight on torches on the walls there's a uh, basically just yeah there's uh, we, we're not we have the option for bedding or we have heating rocks for those uh, kibarin guests Give a what? Uh, that's a new one to me too. Yeah, the the Kibarin are the, like I said earlier, the tribal name, the tribal name for lizard folk. Oh. Ah, right. Yeah, you know, sometimes they require heated rocks to to rest upon. Hmm. Huh. And, uh, nice. What do you yes. think, Dash? 
I'm not cold blooded. Dragon's horn. Not lizard folk. Dragon horn. Oh. And if you require water, he goes over to the wall and there's a stone that he moves and out pours a slight stream of water into uh into a hand carved basin. Oh, out of the neat. wall. He's like, Yep, just squeeze it in there and the rock has a cork on the inside. So it's like foomp. Like, yes, yeah, so there's that. Just basic uh for the for the more uh like like we call it the hand carved. It's very much sort of like in that uh, desperation. Mm. Uh, next up is the Libra, and you follow you mm. guys down, back down the slope, and this time straight in to a basically an upgraded version of the classical, where it's basically Ooh. a li- a mini library. Like there is a there is a bed next to a couple of bookshelves with a slightly bigger desk, some crystalline uh, fixtures for lighting. And uh, not quite candelabras or chandeliers, but just there's there's like crystalline formations in the ceiling that give off this weird ambient light of a this of a looks, very very light green nature. This looks mm. right up Feliata and Bundles Alley's. Hello. I'm kind of curious about the books as well. Um, are they just for show, or uh, they actually contain some writing? Oh no no no! We we actually stock literature. You have your choice between actual texts or prose or uh, scrolls, drama. You, you wouldn't happen to have any uh... dragon text? Or dragon text, yes. Wait, well, I, I, I missed what you first said. You wouldn't happen to have any bestiaries or dragon text, would you? Oh, of course we have the, we have the uh, more. It would be the basic texts like uh, wizard theses and uh, just uh, his, his, historiography and all that such. Mm, uh, that seems nice. Might have to borrow a few books or at least write down a few notes. Unfortunately, they cannot be borrowed. They have to. They must stay in the room. Uh, oh, that's fine. That's fine for me. Well, you can what... you can peruse, but you cannot take. Okay. Fair enough. We have there literally that. Like, we have literally that yeah. um, uh, enchanted into the walls where they cannot leave this this domicile. That makes sense. Uh, they would dis- they would disintegrate and reintegrate under the shelf. Oh, meat mining books. Meat. Oh. You could uh, copy down information, but you could not take the book itself. That's that's valid. That's fair. That's fair. That's, that's very fair. Uh, the, there are multiples of, uh, uh, certain rooms, correct? It's not just, like... We uh, have up to have... two of each currently installed, except... Except for the hand carved. That is an excessive amount of work, I must say. Okay, that makes so sense. So we have one <laughs> example of the hand carved so far. Uh, shall we continue on to the, the rustic and, uh, the new age, then? Yes. And he... He drags you guys back out, back down the hallway, this time to the right and up and down a small spiral sort of way into a small glade where there's just, it looks like there's a tree growing out of the side. There is various fungus and small creatures roaming about like frogs and butterflies. Some uh, occasionally harmless pixies just peeking their heads out of the ceiling out of the ceiling tiles which are which are min- arcana enough to where they look like vines and canopy hmm. Neat. a vole runs this, runs in between the roots this is the rustic this is the rustic yes more for the the uh, natural based the, uh, the the druids and the uh, the rangers who much prefer their uh that they require annual animal companionship of the of the platonic kind, of course, and uh, yeah, this is the rustic. Uh, I'm very very proud. It we we had a very very skilled set of gnomes come in who just knew what they were doing when it came to this. Roddy squints his eyes when he said of the platonic kind, wondering why he needed to put that qualifier in there in the first place. And finally we have the Nuage. 
no age. <laughs> and he pulls you guys back out, and this time you exit back into the lobby area of the hospitality, and he just snaps his fingers, and the lights dim, goes to blackness, pops back in, and it's very much not quite an extension of the previous hallway that you guys entered in with Cellier, but it's very much, it's very sleek. It's very, like, it's a bit plasticky, a bit artificial looking. There is some, some ornate candelabras and crystalline, like, frescoes on the walls. And uh, basically the equivalent of, like, excessively accessorized beanbag chairs with like bejeweled uh torchware and lamps and they have a there are pack? there are there are scrolls hanging from the ceiling and there is actually a uh, separate little section that he's like and over here is where you would trance because uh, most of the particulars of the New Age will uh, require their trance time. So we have a little soundproofed area that is also uh, lightly enchanted to where you cannot be bothered unless you willed to be bothered. And yes, and then we've got, uh, if you look at the floor, he pulls out stuff like, and like, like the rustic, we have a, a, a good uh, baseline of clay infused into the groundwork. So if you wish to relax and let the natural relaxants in the clay take work on, on your on your soul and your physical body, you could. Hmm. Well, ah, I think I'll personally go with the classic. Same here. <laughs> hmm. Are you sure that uh, you don't want to for the... Oh yeah, the, the classic was... Uh, I thought you would have preferred the Libra. <laughs> um, I don't need anything fancy. I was actually talking to Phil. Sorry. Mm. I, I mean, the Libra, it is very, uh, very, very, uh, very amazing. But the classical does provide, uh, does provide a, a much more home feeling. Mm. I suppose comfort is uh, what you kind of seek when you go to uh, an inn. And one of the gnomes actually wanders over and whisper and like, yeah, yeah, over to Dirk. And he's like, oh, yes? Oh, oh, excellent, excellent. Uh, I've just been informed we actually have four examples of the classical in stock currently that... Uh, we don't have too many guests right now, but it turns out we do have sometimes more basic humanoids come in. But yes, we have two of everything except for the hand carved and four of the uh, classical. But yes, we have two Libra, two Aquin, two, Aqu two Aquin, four classical, one hand carved, two Libra, two rustic, and three New Age. Oh, I'm sorry. Six new age. Six new age. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it was a bit of a long shot for me to you had something close to a Savanna. Mm, well, we can overgrow the rustic to where it has taller, more wheat-like grass. Nah, it's fine. I'm fine with classic. <laughs> Alright, would you thing. prefer a bed of hay, a standard, uh, a standard rough cot, or a feather bed? Uh, no, I would think go for a bed. <laughs> think bundles ask a question. Yeah. No, I just I'll play a compliment. Well, I'm happy to provide. I I have been trying for it seems eons to get this place up and running in a way that doesn't just serve the fey kind. But you know the the struggles of of a small fish in a very vast pond. It is very much appreciated. And your rooms are beautiful. Even though I'm just as a... old as the High Priestess. Uh, I think it might be safer for me to have a hay bed. Hay? Okay, we, that's very easy to provide. Excellent, excellent. Oh, um... Are, uh, are your interiors uh, resistant to 
damage as he glances over to Dash. He's gonna look at you, just... His his face blanches. Like... And his eyes kinda go dark. Dragonborn. Uh, he, um... Uh, <laughs> tends to drool a little. In Throwing Dash face. under the bus, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Dash just like looks between everyone. What? You drool in your sleep, man. You put holes in your oh, It was sometimes. one time. More like four times. What? <laughs> He's gonna roll the insight, you. Dash, Dash, not not to be uh, uh, Dash, not to be rude, but uh, but to be honest, you kind of did destroy. Three of the taverns slash hostels we lived in, we stayed in. Yeah, and I thought it'd be, but uh, it, it would I destroyed, be not I to one, warn you, you know. of uh, of this ahead of time and see okay, if there's he, any sort of accommodation. He doesn't that care about do you redirecting to the dash. He is just morbidly insulted that you would imply that you would try and damage his rooms. He does not attempt. No, no. He walks over to you. And towers over you with like standard anime, like face completely shrouded in darkness with piercing eyes. It's like, I feel there's a misunderstanding here. There is not going to be an attempt made. I am asking if there's accommodations. Uh, he doesn't that believe you. I don't want to you stuff. <laughs> this is what you get for trying to throw Dash under the bus. <laughs> Don't throw your teammates under the bus. <laughs> there's something that you wish to say? I would recommend not trying anything to damage the work I've done to make life hospitable for guests. Of course. I would not dream of it. I'm asking if there is some means of combating if someone were to accidentally, or if there was some sort of uh, run you thinks. Do you have a damage deposit that we could lay down in case of something were to uh, accidentally occur for one of us? Dash is just face palming this entire time. Ranya, maybe, uh... Quit while you're ahead. I'll have you know that my accommodations are quite resistant to most of your attempts to Dirk. ruin them. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ra Sir Radrin, if I may. I, uh, uh, if I may. Stone grinding I neck run. looking toward you. If I... Wait. I apologize for my uh, for my compa uh, for my compatriots and <laughs> compatriots horrible horrible and I mean miserably horrible choice of words. Run your stare <laughs> that Feliana. <laughs> she doesn't stare at him. She just keeps looking uh, to Derek. But if I uh, but if I uh, if I may say something, we will not. And I, uh, and I promise on my, uh, on my honor, uh, on my honor as a bard, that, I, uh, that we will not, uh, uh, that we will not, and I mean we will not, uh, not destroy what you, what you have built. Because if I may say so myself, uh, uh, self, you, uh, uh, it is incredible here, uh, here. Seriously, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, no, how do you say that thing again? I'm At asking some our point character. Words. Nuage, nuage, nuage. Okay. Nuage. The nuage, nuage. Thank you. Uh, the new, uh, the nuage, age of comedies are beautiful, and so are the classic, uh, classics. I, uh, I commend you, sir. They are, uh, they are incredible, incredible. Charisma. What do I roll? Just straight charisma. Charisma. All right. Come on, come on. Yes! Yeah, he softens quite a bit, and he just gets a slight smile, like, I can... I am so glad to see someone appreciates the efforts. She smiles widely. Why do you shrugs? 
Ah, uh, yes, the bathing accoutrements. Yes, uh, each of your rooms will have uh, a, an accommodating uh, bathroom, and we also do have the communal that is just at the very, very end of the long hallway. Uh, the one that enters into the actual vestments of the rooms. The the one that we travel down, I showed you that on the tour. At the end of that hallway, there is a communal bathhouse, but everyone else will have a standard a standard water room. The Aquan, the Aquans just happens to be both in one. Each and room I has their own uh, bathroom accommodations then? Uh, hold on, pause one second. Uh, Talek is not here? Yeah, he'd be right back, I guess. Okay. I'm probably going to have to be right back as well to get some tea, because I'm falling asleep. Mm. But it's only, back. Like, oh. it's only like 8 p.m. I've been getting kind of crabby sleep. Crabby sleep? Crabby it's sleep. I've been taking a lot of need to bleach those sheets. Goodness. Anyway, beer back. I need to stop talking to the NPCs, apparently. But whatever. Doesn't matter. I guess it's more of we don't need to rock the boat when we just got here. <laughs> I was asking to be courteous. This is the second time that I've No, no, to be fair, like he rolled a nat no. one on insight. Oh, oh. nat one on insight. Oh, so he okay, horribly yeah. misunderstood Ooh. what you're trying to say. He rolled a nat one. Like I said, this is the second time this has happened. Oh, well. I do that well. Also, Felion is now on one your shit list. I've been on everybody's shit list. <laughs> Bye. Let's see. It's better. And Pawn apparently likes my set, my scene building. It is quite nice. It, it's very nice, actually. Uh, props to you, Brett. And Bumble's actually not sure where he wants to rest his head. He has two options. I only really have one option. To me, you have I guess. six options. Although, uh, <laughs> I kind of uh, have a few things that I want to ask as soon as we're back in the thing. Um, the... So, uh, as soon as uh, we're back in the thing, Ronnie has a couple of questions for the guy. I think we're good to go. Talek says to just keep going. Okay. So, yeah, yeah he... he he, he grins slightly at Feliana's compliments, and so it's like, okay, so classical for the Dragonbjorn looks to Rania, and you would require... Rania thinks, and uh, he looks around at uh, when you are, um, this will be adequate. We are assured privacy, yes? Wait, wait, what? Uh, we're inside the new R room, aren't we? New age. New age. New age. Okay. This room will be adequate. We are assured our privacy, correct? Well, this room is not available. He claps his hands and it's back to the orange lobby. Uh, ah. But there are, there are six new ages available. Yes. I'll take one of those. Mm-hmm. Then you didn't uh, answer me. We are assured privacy, yes? Yes, of course, unless there is a... Uh, except in rare cases of emergency, but those shouldn't happen. Kind of narrow, kind of like lifts an eyebrow. As long as I have... As long as I have my room to myself, it should be fine. Unless you expressly wish to room with another, uh, you should be by yourself. I will pass. All right. Then he turns. Then he turns to Feliana. She, uh, she, uh, she's still smiling. Uh, accoutrements. 
Out of player, help. He, it, uh, uh, he he's asking what type of room would you like. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. I'll take the Libra, please. One Libra, okay. Oh, he, look, he looks. <laughs> I was gonna say he looks italic, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was happier anyway. Uh, so it, uh, he looks to the mm. rabbit, but he's unconscious on the floor for some reason. Like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> lo lo looks to the cat. Looks to the tabaxi. And uh, Hugh, my felicitous friend. Bundle thinks for a moment. He takes out a coin and flips it. So, uh, one second. So, One is tails, two is heads. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Well, I'm just going to roll a d4. High, high is uh, the aquan area. Low is the uh, the rust, the, the the more rustic like area. All right, he says. You know what? I feel like a bit of nostalgia. Uh, give me the aqua aquan area. He he narrows his eyes because you because you tried to deceive him earlier about not knowing about it, and yet you just let let slip that you want nostalgia by going with the aquan. Uh, something I can help you with? He says as he pockets the coin. Oh no no no, nothing nothing to clear up there. All right, so we have. One classical, one new age, one Libra, one Aquin, and is he back yet? Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Hey, howdy! And he looks Bye. finally to the rabbit for like. And which type of room would you like, little one? Uh, anything a bit of like a farm thing. Uh, well, actually, when it comes to the rustic, we can adjust the accoutrement to where it can uh, have like a slight breeze effect and have the slight uh, olfactory sensation of hay, if you would like. Uh, please and thank you. All right then. So, so we have wage, a rustic, a classical. Basically, we have everything but the hand carved. All right. Now, my gnome, I will, if you just be seated for a moment, I will prepare these rooms, and then hopefully within the next 10, 15 minutes, you will have your your beddings and accommodations prepared. Much appreciated. I can actually guarantee it, because we always prepare these things early ahead of time. Just have to like, find the keys and unlock everything and prep the accoutrement. One moment, please. And he walks off. He... He manu he motions for some gnomes to follow him and uh, bundle. Uh, your past perception notices that these gnomes, most of them have a single, like miscolored earlobe on each of them. Hmm. Ask about that later when he gets back. Uh, they, it is the color of like bright, like leaf, like a uh, gold or bronze or brass leaf, a miscolored earlobe on each of them. Okay. And he ushers off into the hallway, and you hear some a slight commotion, but you just assume it's the openings of doors and the maneuvering of matter, and uh, like bring. Be sure to bring me. Uh, the olfactory sensates, please. Give me the salts. And uh, there's just gnomes, like, uh, blah, 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 walking out with tools and bottles and a sacks of salt. And... But meanwhile, you're in the orange, uh, the orange cloud room, and it's... Uh, you know what, uh... It... It's not really garish. It's more just unexpected to see this color anywhere in this facility that seems so sleek and 
uh, standard before this. Marnie adjusts the mask on his face and goes to sit down on one of the oranges. You know, this room's kind of growing on me, says Bumblebee is looking around. Yes, like I said before, it truly is. It's unexpected, but it is... it is good. I guess it is good for our eyes, he says as he rubs his eyes, not used to hearing that orange helps with dark vision. Okay, that's new. <laughs> But I don't know about you guys, but I can, when I will be more than fine once I had a shit once I had an actual bath, whether it's communal or not. I just yeah. got this one creepy feeling we might be walking into a trap. Well, if we were, we kind of screwed ourselves because we don't have any weapons. Speak for yourself. One of the gnomes walks over with a tray balanced on his head. It has orange bread and orange butter. Okay, that's a bit on the nose. I mean, orange bread is delicious. I wouldn't know. I mean, I, I, I had orange bread. It's freaking delicious. I'll take some orange bread. Yep, he, he just slices you off a big hearty slice and and points the knife better. Mm, yes, please. Cuts into it, slathers it up, like puts a little square in the center. Frosted or no? No, thank you. All right, just leaves a little like standard square of butter in the center, just small, like hands it over. Looks to everyone else. She bites. Hmm. No. Ron, you speak. Yeah, never mind. As you bite into <clears throat> the bread, uh, con check. Oh, okay, sure, here I'll I go. Take, I'll take some bread. Help! Help! Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> well, you bite into the bread, and it's not at all what you expect. It's it basically tastes, tastes like very hard, like like rye or pumpernickel, with a slight hint of citrus in the center of it and once you hit that butter it tastes like a fruit gusher like like just pops what? in your mouth so yeah you kind of see star you kind of see stars for a few seconds like whoa that's a lot of fruit like oh jesus christ too much fruit <laughs> dash is taking some bread butter sure frosted no thanks same with you, just a little square of butter. Oh, no, no. Come! Yeah, it, it tastes like a very tougher than usual bread. Like, it's it's a bit tougher, even in texture. Uh, it it kind of tears rather than crumbles. Like, like the skin of a citrus. Like, not exactly like that, but more like that than actual bread. And once you hit that butter, it's like, pow, like, fruit gusher. Quite strong, actually. Hey, guys, actually. I'll, I'll be right back. Just real quick. Okay. Uh, Bundle will walk up and say, I'll, I'll try a little bit of bread and butter, and what's this frosted crap? Frost butter. Oh. Uh, sure, why not? Alright, uh, he kites, cuts off a hearty slice of bread, uh, spreads the butter, and then blows on it, and you see like little ice crystals form out of his mouth. Hmm. And I take a bite. Yeah. Uh, Khan. Twelve. Yeah, with... It's like an icy orange rye, rye bread and it's incredibly powerful fruit flavor and it just pops like once you once you devour it like 
Like you're not seeing stars, but it's like your eyes your eyes just enhance a little bit, like just retool, like readjust to the just smack of citrus you've received. That is that is good. That's really good. Ronya, you gotta try this. Ronya looks over at the bread. I actually had a couple of questions for our gnome friend here, if he would uh, like to answer me. He stares blankly at you. Which is the current ruling party in uh, the in the Veiled Keep? See if he knows. <laughs> Blank stare. Hmm. I was afraid of that. Blinks. Mm. The laws of hospitality apply to us, correct? You are in the care of Dirk. He will take care of you. Hmm. One moment. And I would like to insight. That's a five. Never mind. He thinks he... <laughs> he seems truthful. Mm. That blank stare seems honest. Does this guy have the weird ear thing as well? Yep. Um, it's like... I'm just it's... Gonna Go ahead. Mm. I was going to fly to ask what's, what's the uh, ear thing all about. Looks to you. Nothing. Mm. Well, it's... It's just a like, fashion thing or a natural occurrence with you guys. Blinks. No offense, I don't really, I don't really meet that many gnomes. Blinks, blinks. Okay, never mind. I'm not getting anything out of you, am I? Blinks. I'm not a hundred percent sure if she if he's all there. In that, maybe that could be a magical charm. It could be right. Uh, it would uh, not be unheard uh, of. Uh, hmm? so, sorry about that. I, I'm back. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Hello. So what happened? Uh, mm. They're attempting to question the gnome. Mm. And, Why? And he has and a little name coming. tag that says David. Because the way that you learn... Uh, the way that you learn about uh, um, about an area is to question those that work in it. And it definitely helps to question the help because they know the worst side of it. Although, if I am right, uh, then this guy won't be as much help to us as we think. He... I can assist much... where necessary. Hmm... Well, what if it was not so much necessary as it is, as it is requested? I can try to assist. Hmm. As long as it does not exceed my capacity. Wait, wait, wait. Your capacity? What do you mean? I only have such strength and such wisdom to provide. Ronya oh. stares at this boy. I'd like to do another insight on him again to see if um, I can see what he's about. Mm hmm. Not the 14. Better, but not by much. There is a sort of rhythm and cadence to his speech. So it's not like he has a script, mm. but. Basically, he's sticking to the protocol of the hospitality directory. Hmm. Running nods. All right. Sort of like in customer service, where you can only say so many things to the customer. Yeah, I know. Uh, I really struggling mm. to stay awake. 
drink some coffee or something. I'm trying oh. to drink tea to wake up. Tea is nice, but depends on the tea you're uh, uh, you're drinking. Some Black tea. tea. Yeah, that'll wake you up. I have um, nothing more for the gnome. Rania sits on the floor, and he's gonna try to uh, druid craft some more uh, butterberries into life if he can. Okay. Uh, no bread? I'm yeah, gonna awesome. eat him. <laughs> bread. I have no doubt about that, but I have my reasons. Fair enough. More for me, then. He takes another slice. <laughs> motions over. Yeah, same here. Davido motions over to talk. Bread. Sarah? Okay, what was that? You are insanely quiet. Can everyone else hear him? Yeah, I can. He's, he is kind of... Uh, he does sound kind of far. How about now? Better. Better. Much, much better. Better. Now, I had to be I'm adjusting my value on my headset itself so my ear doesn't bleed. Okay. How about now? Yes, yeah, so Much bread? Better. Yes. Bread, yes. Okay. Butter? Yes. Frosted? Oh, yes. Oh, just a little square of butter. Hands it, hands it over. Takes it and starts eating. Con check. Yeah, big burst of flavor. You just, you guys just watch as Talix's eyes just go into, get slightly unfocused and just like, whoa, as, as the as the raw power of fruit just hits him right in the palate. The power <laughs> of fruit. <laughs> it's such, it's such a strange dichotomy of this this harsh, very dark grainy bread like rye like like rye just smashing together with that raw fruit power you know speaking of fruit Ryan's gonna scratch his chin and he's going to try to ritual cast uh, druid craft on the berries as you scratch your chin and dandruff hits the floor it, it ignites and disappears <laughs> yeah. I really need to take that bath so, huh, uh, it's an 11 and not that, that D4, I guess. It's going to make something weird. That is a 14. It's actually a 10. So... Oh, at disadvantage, huh? Okay. Fake keep. Uh, bye. So you have to exude a bit more attempts to actually improve your barriers because you feel your m magic is muffled inside here. Mm. Especially since you're not actually out in nature. You're in a constructed area. Interesting. Uh, your, your druid craft thrives on like light and sunshine and natural air. However, this place is very artificial. This seems rather... This area seems rather different from what I've known the fate to uh, be involved, be inhabited by. So yeah, your your berries actually do not much of anything. Like they they actually shrink a little bit. It's like hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the raisins of some sort. They don't they don't shrink and shrivel. They just shrink. Like they're now three quarters of their original size. Like. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. So, so they're. they're no different, they're just smaller. So they're great berries. <laughs> yeah, now they're about the size of like a... A cherry? Because eh, mm. they're originally the size of small plums, so now they're like... Yeah, like large cherries. Cherry <laughs> berries! Am I able cherries. to uh, figure out if uh, their effects have changed at all, or if they've lessened? Not without imbibing them. Well, I'm curious. Uh, Ronya, do you need a test subject? Sure. Can I have some more bread, please? <laughs> I take yeah. one of these. Yeah. Okay. I take one of the little small cherry cherry ones, give it a little inspection, and uh, pop it in my mouth. Okay, give me one second. Uh, 
magic in effect. Eh. Uh, heads up, I might end up losing connection here. My dad's trying to get the uh, internet figured out. Well, and that's no good. They are telling me I lose a connection with my game for the last two days. Sorry, I'm sorry. Why are you trying to figure it out when it uh, seems like it was working fine before he started messing with it? No, it's Comcast itself. Okay, so bundle you imbibe the berry, and as soon as it hits your palate, everything around you freezes. Like in place, like Rania's still kind of staring at you expectantly. Feliana's about to take a big old bite out of the bread, but she's just hanging there and uh, uh, bundle uh, uh, dash again is sort of peering around curiously, and Talix also like still looking a bit dizzy from the bread experience. But yeah, you're just staring like, huh? And after. Oh, Schmidt. Are you dice. able to move during this? Yes. Oh. oh. Time berries. I'm glad that oh. I used 20 of those then. So you didn't say happened? that. You yeah, said you yeah, I said I made a group of 20. And he did say he was ritual casting it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, for 12 seconds, time stands still, but then... What do you so? What do you do? Well, once I realize that nothing's moving, I I take a second to oh, realize well, he this. Sounds uh, like he's uh, uh, he his time is dilating as well. God damn it! It better. Okay, I see that time is not moved for the first six seconds. Then I pick up two more and wait for time to move again to be able to relay. What I what just happened to me, to Rania? Yeah, uh, you just sit there calmly, and uh, then Rania's staring at you. Then he blinks like, "Well, uh, Rania, do me a favor. I, I need to I need to test something. Uh, huh? Do you still have that pish?" <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, you can't light up in the I'm, McDonald's, dang it. I'm, how much more of that do I have left after you can't get the McDonald's? I keep every, every time Bundle ever stole it, it was about enough to make a cigarette, so not that much. Okay, well, I had uh, uh, a quarter of a pound before. Oh, you have plenty then. Um, okay. So uh, Bundle's just going to say, okay. I need you to hold it in your hand and hold on to it as tight as possible. Can you do that for me? Yes. Right, yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, reach into my pack and pull out the triple wrapped uh, package that I got okay. way back when. Okay. Okay. The so that's what you're holding tightly in your hand? Uh-huh. The triple wrapped package. Okay, Remember you see, Ron, you pull it? out a tightly wrapped package of what seems to be drugstore stuff. Okay. The moment he pulls it out, and he's, I say, just watch. And I pop it in I pop in another one of those good one of those uh, good cherries. Okay. Good cherries. Them okay. good cherries. You have enough Fine time to, you have enough time to do one action. I'm going to see if I can get that out of his hand as okay. as nimbly as possible. Okay. So, slide a hand check. Sure. 20. Yeah, you get it. You just, just... Like, he hasn't quite closed his hand yet when you get to it, so it's just enough to be like... Whoop! And... Right. Do you just go back to position? Do you move behind him? Do you climb on the ceiling just for fun? Like, what do you do? I take the bag and put it on his head. <laughs> what the... And you're standing next to him. So, time ends, and Bundle's standing immediately next to you. He was across from you a minute, what? a second, like a half second ago. Whoa. When you, when you blink, like, what? What? The hell? Did you hey, just that... teleport? Hey, I was just trying to eat, your, eat her bread. Ah. <laughs> hey, 
uh, just look at Ranya and say, I like the new hat. What? What? Uh, Ranya looks up and then the package falls off his head. Ah! <laughs> okay, so, as it does, I need Bundle to make a con save. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Not that not waft not hits that. you and... Man, it's stuffy in here. Man, it's hot. Man. Whoa. And you pull the collar. Like, you feel like someone just walked through and it was like they were giving off pheromones like a son of a bitch. Oh boy. Why, 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 am I, why do I feel hot and bothered? Uh oh. Well, we found a side effect. Time berries. Good, but nasty side effects. Everything no, okay, that's not She's the, just that's to... not the side effect of the berries. That's the side effect of the catnip. Catnip? Yeah. Oh, bitch, I knew that was it was in the bag, but I just couldn't figure it out. <laughs> that was a long ass time ago. Wait, is that actually from the catnip? Oh yeah. 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 Talek, yeah. Talek, you're still trying Talek, you're still trying to focus. Like that that fruit power hit you hard and you're like they're zooming in and out of focus, like I can see you maybe <laughs> It's not quite drunk goggles, but more like you're you're a you're a camera that just can't focus. Like you keep getting blinks of it. <laughs> Ranya uh, scoops up the catnip back into uh, his little package and tries to seal it back up. Like, yeah, you uh, man you managed to seal it again properly. It takes a couple of good tight knots and twirls, but yeah, you get it. How's the bundle? Um, <laughs> you roll a one. Yeah, I'm. I am looking very perturbed. <laughs> like what? What the hell was that, Ranya? Just don't, uh, look, the just don't look below his waist, okay? Okay, Feliana? What? Hmm? What happened to Fel? Just don't look below what? his midsection. Uh, oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! <laughs> oh, no! Ronya <laughs> is right next to that thing! Oh, no! Oh! Do you, uh... Oh! Do you a bit of privacy, bundle? Bundle, no! Bundles. The gnome offers you a cushion. <laughs> <laughs> like a gnome, no, no, actually doesn't even offer it. A gnome just walks by with a cushion on his head. <laughs> <laughs> he walks right underneath bundle and something rests uh, right on top of the pillow. I thought this was a PG stream. <laughs> well, apparently not. But, uh, <laughs> hey, we have not been explicit yet, so we're fine. But Bundle just grabs the cushion, puts it over his section, and says, uh, Okay, I don't know what that was, but the fairies, it seemed like they slowed down time for me. And you guys were standing still. And I am still fucking hot, and I don't know why. I don't think it's so much slowed down time for you, it's sped up time for you. I think it may have made you go faster. Like a heathberry. I would keep up with those, and I, uh, I hope we get our room soon. That's all I'm asking. Oh, so can I have back that extra one you have with me at 18? I, I give it back, and I, and I say just make get sure no, no one that we don't like gets those. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely gonna put a patent on these, and I'm gonna like grow. I wonder if I can, uh, if I, like, juice these things, if I can make a heath potion. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah? As, as Bundle tries to find a place to sit down. That... Or... There, there's, there's, a, there's a sofa section on the, other, on the opposite side of the room. Yeah, he that goes there. Or... <laughs> Actually, if, uh, if that makes a heath potion, it will either make a heath potion or it will make you never come out of time. I don't know how that would end up. I'd, I'd be willing to be the test subject. Mm. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, now I... It's, uh, I thought that I completely failed at making something in my top 10, but apparently there is a sliding scale on what I can get. 
that isn't exactly uh, delinear or um, improved. Actually, 20 still seems to be the best, but apparently they all have different effects. Jesus Christ. I kind of wonder what happens if I get a 2 or a 1. I do too. <laughs> Let's fly! So, and after so yeah, only about only about five minutes has passed out here during these shenanigans, and finally Dirk pops out like, "All right, your accommodations are ready," and you especially, Mister uh, Talc, your your hay olfactories have been installed. Uh, we have uh, increased the size of the grasses to one side. And uh, would you like a standard, like, bed of leaves, or would you like a, a bale of hay to uh, rest on? Metallic uh, is still in the days. I wonder if I, if I give him one of the hay berries, it'll pep him up. It, it might. What if they're, like, super copy beans? I'll take... Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll take hay. All right. Would you like a bale or would you like just a bed of hay? Tyler shakes his head. Ugh. Make that bed. Can he's currently do. snaps his fingers and points at a gnome, and he just he is like stands up erect and just walks off like dem 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 like on a mission. <laughs> Mario looks over to like, Do you eat hay? What now? Do you eat hay? No, we don't eat hay. That's stupid. Why would someone eat hay? Yeah, uh, I remember rabbits eating hay on occasion. With no, the worst thing. Eat, days, eat dandelions and crabgrass. But they can eat hay. Anyway. So yes, all your accompaniment, all your accoutrements are ready. Cool. I'll just uh, I'll hang out here for a little bit. <laughs> You, you, oh, <laughs> you, you gonna be all right, bundle? I'll, I'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> you, you, you think you may want to try to take that cold shower, maybe? I'll wait till everyone's in their rooms. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it'd be a shame if you poke someone's eye out. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna head to my room. Go take a bath. Hmm. Rania yeah. heads over to the room to go take his bath as well. I might head back to the greenhouse. Uh, to the, uh, there. I'll see she you there tomorrow. tomorrow then. Hold, hold on, I, I couldn't hear her. Oh no, it's okay. I, I just I lost my words. So basically, she heads over to her room to also take a bath. Okay. Bath. Hmm. All right. So Dash, you head off, and you just. Find your standard in type room. There's a oh, and actually before you leave, Dash, do you want to see? Oh, by the way, did you? We can. Did you want uh, an ale tap or did you want just want standard water tap? Standard water is fine. Excellent. No changes needed. Enjoy. And just hands you a small, smooth gemstone. That's smooth on one side and like diamond like, where it's like uh, compartmentalized on the other. Yeah, it's just standard amber colored, like for you. And as Fel walks by, he hands you a a white crystal for you. Oh. She takes Rania, it. Not really. Not. Yep, Rania, you pass by. He hands off a uh, a pink cylinder. Hmm. And Talik, you walk by. He gives you a literal wooden key. Huh. And yeah, Dash, as you head off, uh, you meet, uh, <coughs> as you walk down, actually part of the gemstone will glow in like like a compass in the direction you should go in. Okay. And, it, and it points you down slightly to the left, and then it glows very heartily and slightly warmly in front of a big old wooden door. 
Mm, and there's actually special. a little an in investigation check. For who? Dash. Oh, for Dash. Mm. Yeah, you pass. Uh, there is a slot in the door. <laughs> there is no handle, but there is a slot. Dash will try putting the gem in the slot. It magnetizes itself in, dissolves inward, and a handle appears. Open it up. Yep, you open it up, and it's just, just like the standard room, but just, uh, uh, yeah, it's got some light torch light going on. There's the slight waft of wood and pine and uh, slight, slight firelight. And yeah, there's just a little basin with a tap, a long wiry tap that just wobbles in in and out like a like like a christmas like like a tree like a tree root almost and yeah you've got a and you asked for you wanted hay bedding yeah yeah you've got a just a big old sack full of hay that sitting on top of a wooden frame right. first things first immediately going for the bath yep uh, you look straight back at the back of the room, and there is a a little alcove with torchlight emanating from it. And you enter it, and there is just a small little. Uh, there's a there's a there's a reasonably sized basin, like an actual wash, like not an actual just like uh, a hand basin, but like an actual like almost a tub. It's just carved out of wood. Like it's it's like a. A slightly larger dragon beer in size trough okay. that can fit you. So you just climb on in, uh, and there's actually a lever system above you that has a red lever, a blue lever, and a green lever. I try the green lever. The green lever, uh, herbs and spice it, spices fall on top of you, and in a rain shower like it's 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 the herbs and spices like like bath like uh bath bombs but along with water and pho and uh and seltzer so it's bubbly and insanely fresh yeah, well, we're, we're talking like be... we're talking like five gum fresh <laughs> well dash would just proceed to bathe Yep, and there is there are a couple of tools on the side, like a big old long, like back back scratcher brush, and uh, uh, a manicure set. So like clippers and such. Okay. Meanwhile. There. Meanwhile. Right. During the meanwhile, I need to use the restroom. Go ahead. So then we get to. Fell. Hey. And you have your pink, uh, pink crystal. Uh, your purple I crystal. That was a white, cr I white was crystal. crystal. Yeah, it's white it's... crystal. <laughs> yeah. So he had the amber. You had the white crystal. Rania had the purple, the uh, the purple pink cylinder, and Talik had the wooden key. Uh, now so... the combiner items. Fafel, you Ooh, wander down the hallway, and it actually takes you down a little ways. Oh. Like, you just follow the hallway down and to the right, and it glows nice and warmly in front of a uh, curtain system. But you try and move one curtain aside, and, it, and it's just another curtain. Like, move okay. inside the curtain again, another curtain, another curtain, another curtain. Okay. Then what? eventually... <laughs> Investigation check. All right. <laughs> oh, gods, please don't fail me now. Goodbye, Feliana. Oh, no! Oh, no, Feliana! Feliana, you're in, you're in the Black Lodge. <laughs> if I am! Damn! <laughs> Excuse me, I am These curtains normal. are gray, first of all. They're, like, gray <laughs> okay, and... Okay. They're, like, they're, like, gray and... They're, like, various <laughs> shades of gray and silver. So oh, yeah, actually, Fay Lodge. <laughs> so you notice that each of them have like a little key. Each of the curtains have a little keyhole in them that's shaped curiously, almost the size of that crystal. Oh, 
she uh, she uh, she um, j uh, she slowly pushes uh, uh, pu puts the crystal near the keyholes. Yeah, as you slide it in, it makes it sound like a coin-operated uh, mechanism, and uh, the curtain billows for about four seconds. Then it then it stays steady. Oh, and she opens the curtain. And again you this time? find huh? a delightful little alcove, just dimly lit by silvery candlelight. There is. There are two bookshelves on either side of a long feather bed. Where it actually, it's actually like a, like an up, like a like a four poster bed, where there's nice. and there's a, a bedside table, and actually built into the bedside table is a bookshelf on top of it. So one side is the bedside table with the book with the half bookshelf on top. The other side is the full bookshelf, and there and you look to the left, and there is an and there is a long, ornate, ornate bejeweled tub sunken into the ground. Phil just looks around this entire place, and she sighs. Oh, I'm going to miss this place after we go. She goes immediately to take a bath. <laughs> yep, this one has a. Uh, like classical bathtub handles, like little, uh, uh, my mind is blanking, uh, like faucet handles, like standard oh. four, four point handles. Oh. And one of them is blue, one of them is red, and the other one is green. Hmm. Actually, I'm sorry, white. The third one is white. Oh. It's right in between hmm. the blue and the red. Hi, France. Sorry. <laughs> she goes for the blue. Yeah, as you touch that that handle, it feels ice cold, and out pops some just out pops water with little ice floats in it as it slowly fills up the tub. Is the water ice cold? It's fairly chilly. You stick your hand in, like ooh, like you stick like, your hand, like ooh, like you you shiver, yeah. not violently, but like oh wow. I might go for the white one if it was possible, <laughs> or am I just stuck with the blue one? Well, if I'm stuck with the blue one. I'm good. <laughs> well, it's blue, white, and red. Oh, blue, white, and red. Oh, oh, she goes to turn for the. If it's possible, she's gonna turn the the white faucet. Uh. As but you first close, uh, but first she closes the blue faucet. There we go. Okay, you close the blue faucet, and as you as you try and turn the white faucet, it doesn't. Like it's like, mm, mm, mm. and you realize it's not a it's not a twist mechanism. It's a push mechanism. Oh. She pushes. You push it, and from behind you comes its explosive <laughs> confetti <laughs> of just like bath bombs and like confetti like streamers into the into the tub where they dissolve into like crystalline like glittery bath bomb texture yes it smells I've, faintly of nutmeg yes I have a feeling Brett had fun making these <laughs> <laughs> it's um, fun Uh, Water is still ice cold, though. Yeah, she. Uh, the yeah, pool, she go, the, the yeah, she goes. The ice floats for, are still in there. Yeah, she, she goes for the. Uh, she goes for the red for the red faucet now. Yeah, and she as like, you oh. as you immediately see jets from the bomb tub erupt, the ice floats slowly, slowly start to melt. As you sense the water, it does indeed get warmer. As it reaches about full capacity, the water is still just above lukewarm, just because of the ice flows that were in there previously. Nice. And she finally relaxes in her bath. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we, that was amazing. <laughs> and then we're gonna cut to Rania with his uh, Nui. I actually would like to uh, be last if that's all right. Okay, Talik, you take oh. your wooden key and 
Immediately, as you enter the hallway, a wooden ladder descends from the ceiling and plants itself in front of you, and the key moves, motions to motion upward. Okay. And you climb up to discover you're in a treehouse. Hmm. Treehouse. Yep, you're in a treehouse. There's, as soon as you enter, the, the the rich scent of freshly begotten hay just fills the air, and there's a slight breeze in the air. It's nice and warm. It feels like a an early summer day. You can if hear. When you learn about this, you can you hear can the. Get so freaking jealous. You can hear the ambiance of livestock somewhere, even though there's no real windows. Or such around, but you do feel like you're literally living inside of a tree. But there is a nice little bed of hay laid off to the side. And strangely enough, the, the floor looks like it's made of like moss or clay. And yeah, it's fairly comforting. There is there's actually a little basin built into the floor where you literally pull up this little tree. This like tiny, tiny tree icon and a spring pops up and slowly fills up the basin as the basin and as the water fills up the basin sinks further and further into the floor like a scale system actually seems pretty nice hmm? is comcast ruining talix experience oh, okay so yeah uh, you got yourself your bed of hay, you got your scent of... You got the scent of the farming areas. You got your tree house, you got your tree basin. And there's even the, the walls are coated with toadstools and moss and uh, little stick insects that just maneuver around the ceiling. Is there anything specifically you want to role play or Alec? Oh, I thought you talked to Rania. But no, 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 this is your room. Oh. oh. Yeah, th th this is your room. You're you're the rustic I'm, one. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. Yeah. Uh Okay. Yeah, you have a tree house. There are toadstools in the walls as well as moss. Uh, there's a tree icon on the floor that you lift up and it forms a sinking pool basin. And you got your bed of hay. You hear the ambiance of livestock uh, and uh, the olfactory scent of hay. Bales are everywhere. Not as close as home, but pretty close. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the bath? I need a bath. Yep, you... The... Uh, the key points you to the tree icon on the floor. Okay. Looks at the icon. Yeah, it's basically like a tiny, tiny, like, Charlie Brown-esque Christmas tree in the floor. <laughs> and as you look at it, uh, the, the key makes a motion as if being uprooted. Apparently the tree house is currently flat. <laughs> Just uh, pull at the tree. Or the tree pulls the tree. Yeah, as you lift it up, it's like a lever mechanism where you lift it up and water just billows out of the floor and slowly starts sinking in the basin. Where now, where the tree was, it uh, all around it, it it like forms like a circle pool, like just the the floor around the tree sinks in the ground and oh. forms like this little like not quite jacuzzi but like a seated pool area where it just fills in with cool rich clear water <laughs> and there are branches that have different colors of green of uh, 
of uh, blue, yellow, and red. Uh, let's give the blue a try. Blue, just little little ice cubes float from the bottom and start bobbing in the water. Huh. Okay, let's give them all a try. As you press all three at once, uh, first of all, uh, the tree, it's the, the, the mini tree, tree in your hand starts vibrating a little bit as from it, like snow starts, like what seems like snow starts efforting itself out, like foom, 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 and floating down to the water as it clouds it up and gives it the slight smell of vanilla and aromatics, like a candle. And and uh, as you pull the, the the red branch, the ice floats disappear as a light steam starts rising from the pool. I, talk, I slowly get in and start relaxing. Yeah, it's it's quite 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 warm. It's like ah, uh, like nice and the perfect relaxing temperature. Oh God, my poor cotton tail. And then we're going to cut to Bundle, who after a minute, you regain your senses. Just... Okay. Now that I'm not supercharged, he says as he stands up. He goes I, wonder, over... <laughs> I wonder if the combination of catnip and the berries had any the cause of that effect. I have no idea. You guys might need to NPC me for the rest of the session. You're that bad, man? I am literally falling asleep at my desk. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm so relaxing. <laughs> it's fine, it's not your fault, it's mine. Mm. I'm okay, sorry, guys. Cold shower. I NPC yeah, yeah. man. But I suppose uh, uh, we could have you, like... You did go through a lot, so we could say that your character is taking this, like, the next day for complete rest. Yeah, just, if I miss anything, be sure to catch me up, please. Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll send you the video. Uh-huh. All right. With, with the time code. I'm sorry. Okay. Adios. Have a good night, man. Peace. Later, dude. Okay. So, Bundle, you just lift up, like, shake it off, and there's, uh... Dirk, waiting right next to you with a with a big old smile on his face. Hmm. Have you been here the whole time? <laughs> I can't leave a I can't leave a hospitable waiting. I I see. He says he looked feeling a, a bit nervous. I didn't notice the guy was just literally standing next to him, but. <laughs> He will ask, uh, I guess everyone else has gone on and paired off to their rooms? If you release the cushion, I have your room key. Oh, uh, right. And he puts the cushion down and uh, awaits the key. And he holds out a big old blue orb about three quarters the size of a bowling ball. Whoa, that's, uh, that's rather massive for a key. You'll see. Points to the hallway. But uh, he takes the key, and before he goes off to go find his room, he wants to ask him a couple of questions. Yes? Uh, first off, how long did it take you to make these rooms? Because I am rather impressed. Well, I we mean, most recently installed the non-New Age and uh, hand-carved rooms very, very recently. We've only recently had to accommodate... Well, hang on, no. That's not entirely true. We've had the New Age because, well, the population here. And uh, then there is the Rustic, because we do occasionally have a Druid or two pass through. And a Ranger. There was one Ranger. That was curious, but... Uh, the the Aquin, the Classical, the Libra, and the Libra, along with the... Uh, yeah, those three were the ones that I needed to take time and actually uh, tie the way some uh, actual uh, time to carve out, so to say. But yeah, it, it only took me about, um, uh, 
oh, I'd say 150 years to get to get that through them. Wow, impressive! And he is not being deceitful at all. He is rather fascinated. But uh, he did, he then goes on to ask, "Well, so many rooms. How many visitors do you actually get?" There was the one occasion of the uh, the proclaimed seat of the country came through with a uh, a procession, but that was only about a rough dozen. So they, they most of them managed to handle the nuage, and uh, the that's when we started building the classicals in. Uh, on mass, so we only had one at the time, and it turns out the uh, the king in question really appreciated the Aquan and the Libra, so we had to actually create a special combination for him, which wasn't too much trouble, but it did it did cost him a little extra since he was actually paying to stay. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, there's another question we need to ask since I uh, typically am the treasurer for our party. How much is it to stay here? Well. Per night, typically we have you pay in labor. Labor? Labor. I... I... Do you mind, uh... elaborating? If you stay more than one or two nights, we may draft you into service. Oh. He holds up the contract. But, uh, yes, the... Oh, uh... And when you picked your rooms, uh, you really should have read the fine print on the contract, that if you stay more than two days on your on your uh, goodwill uh, diplomacy mission, we will we retain the rights to draft you into service. Can you make me a copy of this? Uh, sure. He just, he just oh, goes to the desk, lifts out a drawer, and hands you a big hefty scroll. And Bundles proce proceeds to read the entire thing to make sure that there's nothing. Aren't you going right. to head off to your room? Uh, I, I will, but uh, I'm more the curious type, you know, us tabaxi and all. <laughs> um, that being said, I did notice something about your uh, your gnomish uh, tenants. Raises uh, an eyebrow. What's with the uh, weird color on the ears? I assume it's a tribal or a uh, descendants thing. Can I roll inside on that? Sure. Okay. Bam. All right. So you stare into his eyes, and he comes off as he knows a little bit about them, but he doesn't know a lot. Like, he has bare-bones ideas about what that specific notation means. But he's still trying to get a read on you as well. Okay. Uh, okay, well, I guess it's a passing thought, I suppose. Uh, then there's a... a I'm actually hoping to maybe someone maybe ran into her, but is there a female version of this the sea this is that you see before you pass through here at any time and the, uh, the lady in question should be my sister if you have your sister uh, seen yes sister I was about to ask you which one are you asking about are you asking about uh, the are you asking about Kira or are you asking about <laughs> he's asking about his twin sister not Kira Okay, yeah, he says, mm, yeah, I do distinctly remember a, a, a tabaxi coming through with the, uh, the diplomatic procession I mentioned earlier. When? And the, he goes, for, he went from being cordial to being serious. When? Oh, time passes so frivolously here. I'd say... <sighs> now, how much older or younger than you are, her? Um, we're, they're, they're, they're fraternal twins. Okay. So they're, by, by minutes. <laughs> okay, 
okay, okay, okay, okay, okay, okay, okay. Oh, so that would have been about, um, I guess that would have been 46 moon cycles ago. Hmm. Do you know which direction she went? She exited with the king's, with the royalty procession. We did not oh. follow them. Fair enough. I did not, anyway, so I'm just, just hospitality. Well, I, I will say this. With rooms and information, you have been most hospitable. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Am okay. I thinking of the wrong sister? No, you're good. You got the all right one. The one who's in the guard? I mean, if you're talking about the one that's in the guard, then yeah, you're thinking of the wrong one. Shit! We're talking about the fraternal twin. <laughs> Send the character sheet. To be fair, he has a lot of sisters. I do. <laughs> I have six. <laughs> I'm trying to keep track of Oasis and everything. Uh. Oasis wave on Customer that... mm. I distinctly remember a tabaxi attempting to enter with a group, but I also remember one coming through with the royal procession. One was successful, mm. one was not. Were they both Panthers? Um, I believe that's what they refer to your type as, yes. Oh. That, okay. It could be either one of... One was successful and one was not... One was with the king? Yes. Oh, boy. I know which one that one is. I'm going to steer clear of her as much as possible. But, <laughs> but the other, I might have to see about. You have been most, most, most helpful. Uh... And he I hands, aim to please. He hands him ten gold. What is this? Uh, typically, this uh, a custom, at least in my profession, information does not come cheap. Oh, and that's all he's going to say on the matter. <laughs> Oh, I believe you misunderstood again. Uh, we don't particularly partake in the the uh, capital portrayals. We mostly partake in the actual fruits of labor portrayals. So I am touched, but I have no need of this. Unless I'm just to hang them oh. in a picture frame saying, Yes, once a panther gave me these things. You know what? Add that to your tales. All right. Takes the ten gold and just... Throws them to a gnome who catches them and uh, ushers ushered it into a drawer. For later, I suppose. So, um, your room will be down, down, down. Alright. And uh, I'll take my leave then. Thank you. Yep. And he goes off to find his room. Yep, you walk all the way down to where you initially run into what you suppose is the bathhouse with just little little glass beads hanging blocking an entryway but it, at the last second the ball has you turn to the left and enter and take down a slope until finally it glows warmly and ahead of you you see just a small rabbit hole yeah. am I supposed to fit in this he says as he walks towards it uh, you stare at your your key, and it makes a swirling motion as if it's moving forward. Okay, I push. I take the key and push it into the hole. It spits it back out. Pring. What? You try and push it in. You're like like a foot away from it. Try and push it in. It spits it back out violently. Hmm. You look back at it. The figures. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Oh. Uh, 
Alright, say that again. Uh, you said you're gonna roll for something. I was gonna see uh, what I have to roll to figure this out. Intelligence. Come on! God it is swirling it. really fast. But actually, as you get up close to it, it slows down. Like you step back, <laughs> it speeds up. You s get close, it slows. It just stops and it grows. It glows solid. Hmm. Well, then I attempt to shake it up as I start moving towards the hole, then? Investigation. Okay. Much better. <laughs> there are lines in the ground. Like, pointing towards the hole. And there's a specific line, and they start about 15 feet away from the hole with, like, a, a line drawn on the ground. There are also gutters on the side of the of the hallway for some reason. I look left, I look right, and I follow the lines with with the key. See if that does anything. What? I take the key in my hand and start to follow along the lines with the key. See if that does anything. <laughs> now I feel stupid for not figuring this out. <laughs> okay. You, what, what are you just, just on the ground pushing the ball forward, pushing pushing the orb forward? I suppose so because I'm, I I feel like I'm not getting this. Okay, there are ruts on the side of this hallway on both sides that lead into the wall, but not through the wall. They stop at the wall. There are lines on the floor, in like straight along patterns leading towards the rabbit hutch. Okay. So. That looks like about it's about as big enough just for the ball to fit in. Okay. Well, then I'm going to put the ball in the in the ruts on the side. You put them in the ruts, it sits there. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> I don't want to say I'm stupid, but I think I'm going to go ahead and say I'm stupid. <laughs> As you sit there staring at the orb, a gnome appears like, Oh, having trouble with your key? Uh, maybe an Aquan could probably get this a little bit better than me, but yeah. Have you heard of the overworld game of Ten Pins? Wait, bowling? He he looks at the he looks at the hole, looks at the ball, looks at the hole, and he's like, "Oh man!" Look at the and gutters just... on the side. Like, mm. <laughs> and so he takes the ball <laughs> and bowls it in. <laughs> Dex check. Okay. Yeah, 15. it it smacks in the center. The wall explodes, and there is a grotto. <laughs> uh, Happy to touching... be of service. Do I do I tip you? <laughs> if Chuck E. Cheese was the resort. <laughs> but yeah, he, he thanks the gnome and heads into the little grotto area. Welcome to Nickelodeon Resort. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you enter and it's very peaceful, very Yeah, there's there's moss on the ground, there's uh, a good steady crick that leads into a ponding area with what looks like a lawn chair with slits the a slitted lawn chair with like uh, weighted with like a uh, little slots on it for like placing weights or uh, rocks in to where to sink and there are like there are like various trinkets on the side to allow that and there is there is also a hammock that resides above the water and yeah it's very soothing very calming a fish occasionally leaps out from up in the stream and like like just leaps up in the air slaps back down and yeah it's uh it's fairly calming 
Oh, seeing as how there's a nice little area for him to swim in, he actually just, as he's walking in, just starts stripping his clothes off and dives into the water. Yeah, it's it's just a shade below lukewarm, like halfway between chilled and lukewarm. Like it's perfectly just fine water. Oh, and now he's doing the nude dead man float on in that area. Like this is nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then we cut to the boy with the pink cylinder. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rania heads down the hall and uh, proceeds to his room, I guess. Yep. So. I'm guessing the ball is guiding him. Yep. You you follow the directions and it actually has you as soon as you enter the hallway it has you turn right. And right there there is a there is just a tube. Like like basically what you see at the bank when you want to make a deposit from the drive through Ah! And there's just a little slot that's about the size of the cylinder. Oh boy. I'm getting the Jetson vibe here. I don't have that in Brazil. Strange. Oh. You know what it is though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen one before. Okay. When you looking around like do I go into it? No, no, the, the, there's only like a little, like a little like mail slot that the, that looks oh. like it's only big enough. Like the tube is fully turned around, like it's closed at the moment, but there is a tiny slot right. available for the cylinder. Okay. Rania puts the cylinder into the slot. Hmm. This sucks up into the ceiling and the, the cylinder tube swirls open to reveal a pathway in where there is just this slick artificial looking pad just all like new agey and plastique and there are beanbag chairs covered in basic fake pearls mm. and the the crystalline insignias on the on the ceiling and the walls emanate a dull but in but warmly inviting uh, arcane will of the wispy light, mm. and uh, there's a charming little trance corner where there is just a cushion, and yes, there is an as well as a sleek sectional armchair, mm. and yes, a uh, small. A cubby area with books and scrolls and uh, writing materia as well as candles. Ronya kind of grimaces a little as he looks around at the thing. Mm. Oh, I did ask for it. He enters and uh, closes the door behind him, I guess. Yeah, as you enter through, it just automatically swirls around. Oh, bundle's gone, by the way. Bundle? No, he's not. He's gone in the roll 20. Okay. Well, I heard him on the thing. Yeah, he's here. I can hear him. Hmm. Bundle, what's up? Bundle? Okay, well, we can hear the people behind him. Can you hear me now? Hey. Uh huh. Okay, I'm not, not sure what that was, but I'm, I'm back. It was weird. We can hear the people in the McDonald's, but not you. That is, that is very weird. So yeah, Rania, as soon as you enter, the tube behind you closes and the uh, the cylinder just hangs from the ceiling like, like on a keychain. Hmm. Rania looks around to see if any of those gnomes are about. 
Oh, no. Mm. Nope, completely private. Moranya is going to do something uh, before he uh, proceeds. He's going to cast Detect Magic as a ritual. To, uh, see if there's any listening devices or uh, or like um, observing uh, spells, anything involving scrying in any sort of way here. Okay. Um... Second. All right. Uh, investigation with disadvantage. Mm. Oh boy. Ha! Uh. Yeah. Uh, basically. You are having trouble accessing your nature magic here. Again, you think it's just the artificial atmosphere. How like you can even tell the cool, refreshing air being pumped in is not all natural. It's Probably got lips out an annoying sigh. <sighs> well, I wanted lifeless. Hmm. Uh bother doing it again. Uh, Rania uh, sets down his stuff and he uh, walks over to uh, the table. Uh, I'm assuming there's a table in the room. Yeah, there's a little cubby filled with scrolls and papers and uh, candles. That's for a table. Something to set my st uh, stuff on if I can. There's no, like, um, a small dining table or, there's like, a, the there's table. There's a sectional. Out. Mm. All right. Uh, Rania reaches to doing bag, and uh, he pulls out uh, a... I'm pretty sure I had a blanket somewhere in my pack, didn't I? Yeah, I'll say you have one. Okay. I stretch out a blanket on the ground, and... Uh, uh, I, I cast uh, uh, create food and water for myself onto it. Creating quite a lot of food. Uh, uh, I stretched out the blanket so I wouldn't get the floor dirty. Uh, Can I still cast it in here or not? If it's only half amount, that's fine. Arcana disadvantage. That's a 14. Okay, so you make about... A small feast amount, like a good large dinner sized, like enough for two people to share, but, and fill themselves to their utmost fill of bursting, but yeah, you have just some good bread, some, some slightly overripe pumpkins, and uh, a great amount of good berries that seem lightly lacking in color. Mm. Yeah. And it's all bathed in a cornucopia of like lettuce leaves and uh, and wicker wiring. That's perfectly fine, but it still lasts for twenty four hours, right? It lasts for eight hours. It lasts for eight hours. Okay. This place, this place muffles magic. That's fair. Well, no, that's that'll be. Rania goes over to uh, uh, go to go see to his bath. Yep, uh, you stare around and you just peer around like, okay, if I were a bath in a wage fey area, where would I be? And for some reason, you are attracted over to one of the crystalline insignias on the wall. 
and you look at it and it looks almost like like when you come to when you were in the city once you saw some really ornate doors with like uh knockers and like uh visages scrawled into the door and it looks sort of like that but made of crystals like hmm Rania attempts to knock it uh, you you knock on it and it opens up and reveals just this overwhelming basin. Just it's it's a walk-in this small pool, and there are oils and and addendums all lining the edge. Are there any shampoos and conditioners? Oh yes, there's one that specifically has hair strands on it. On it. I thought you said this place wasn't used before. The gnomes are slacking. Look at it. No, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, it has like the the sign. It has like oh. in it, it has like a uh, like a label mm -hmm. that that signifies hair. Right. Okay. Um. Is there a mirror about. Oh yes. Yeah, the the walls are mirrored. Wanda walks over to one of the mirrors, and he starts to take off his clothes, piece by piece, and then he examines over his body. Okay, as you get to removing your torso materials, your the center around your navel, where the umbilical scar is, there is a nice hearty nesting of feathers mm. small there it is and as you stare closer at your reflection in the mirror you see your lips are incredibly chapped to the point they come to a point just below the nostril Rania turns around and looks at his back back's just little feathers poking out here and there like not excessive, but there is a slight rash of feathers, especially on your upper sh upper body. For Rania takes off his boots and his pants, looks over his legs and feet. Uh, they also look a little pointier than usual. Hmm. Rania lets out a sigh and is like, I figured, oh well. Hopefully I'll have answers soon enough. He goes into the bath and begins to bathe, being sure to uh, take real close, uh, pay real close attention to his scalp. And gingerly tries to, like, wash um, the feathers on him, I guess. Mm hmm. There is also a uh, shaving kit over uh, along with the oils and the uh selves and stuff. Fantastic. And brill cream. Uh, brill cream. When you looks at the cream. Hair sculpt. Okay. Hair sculpt, basically. Uh, mm, I prefer the natural look. The, the Dale Cooper brill cream. <laughs> mm, Dale right. Cooper! Good for him, but... A yeah. Not my thing. There's this very happy man with a great with a great sense of style and a thumbs up on the cover. <laughs> uh, very tempting. Named Kale Duper. <laughs> Kale Duper Mr. C's boy. secret formula. Oh no. It'll make me evil. Okay. Well uh, Rania gets out of the tub and uh, he proceeds to shave up. Uh, shaving around his uh, face, chin, upper lip. Slight of hand shot. Oh boy. I'm assuming I'm touching myself while I'm right. I mean, yeah. I hope. I hope so, and not at the same time. Oh, God damn it, I'm gonna slit my throat. No, um. Don't do that! <laughs> You manage your upper body just fine, but once you come around your, your belly area, you do manage to... And I didn't hear you mention you're going to scratch yourself. So, 
I, I, I'm not scratching myself. I'm uh, like touching, uh, like pulling my skin taut, so I'm not like nicking it. Okay, so you you do your best to get that done, but regardless, once you get her on your belly, it's very tender. So as you're almost done finishing that bit off, you do nick yourself, and it's like ah, ah. rats. Um, however, hmm? uh. Milk white pours out of that wound rather than your typical hemoglobin. That's not normal for an owl. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to have a talk. Hmm. Look for a moment. Is it possible to detect poison or disease on myself? You could try. Arcana disadvantage. Run your witch will cast it. That's an 18. Alright. You examine that portion of yourself that leaked the Milky Way, and you do not detect a disease. So it's natural. Run your uses uh, cure wounds on it. Yeah, it heals up just fine. There's a nice, still light scar on it, but it's not like overabundant. Like, wow, someone tried to stab you. It's more like, oh, just light nicking scar, like when you shave. Mm. Mario looks himself over, making sure he didn't like miss any bits on him. <sighs> he stares at himself in the mirror for a moment, to, like, oh, I guess as, you're as ready as you are. He cracks his neck, walks out, eats a bit of the food, um, like at least about half of it. Wanting to save some for after his little ordeal. Mm -hmm. And um, he looks around for that patch of clay that you mentioned that people use for meditating. Yeah, it's actually um, inside the over by the trance section over in the corner there's a cushion surrounded with well it's it's just a cushion and there's a little bowl of like uh facial clay and uh like 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 clay mask that people use mm. and uh, uh this is outside of that um like meditation room apparently no no it's in the meditation chamber like it's uh, just like a little uh a separate alcove. Be... It's a separate corner uh, of the yeah. room. Like on one side was the the crystal entryway into the bath, and then on the other, like north northeast corner, there was a little alcove dedicated with a cushion and a bowl and uh, candles and incense and what have you. The do not disturb room. Yes. All right. I go in. Sit down uh, to and uh, sit down to the clay to meditate. Mm hmm. Arnie lets out a sigh, closes his eyes. I think I forgot to t uh, say that he uh, uh, got changed into his boxers, but he did. Hold on, train. He has, he has boxers? Yes. Uh, they have... Uh, uh, they have long johns in my world, I'll have you know. Well, uh, he cut off those long johns a while ago, finding the long johns a little bit restricting. Oh, he avoided the warranty. Yeah. He ain't gonna bring them back. Believe me, what he uh, what he's done to those things, they, they're never come. Uh, they, they won't want them back. Anyway, uh, but uh, other than uh, the uh, the cut off long johns, uh, he's uh, completely unclothed and just attempting to meditate himself. Are you attempting anything special with this meditation? He tries to make a call. 
Okay, as you attempt to let your spirit go on a calling, you feel your soul rocket out of your body and into space. Damn. Uh, and you are rocketing along, and you can't even take the time to notice, like, w get your bearings. You are rocketing along and pinballing all around, trying to, trying to catch anything, and you're getting nothing. Occasionally you're getting... Uh, yeah. Like, like you're not even getting a clear signal on who you're trying to call. Because you just feel this vastness. And eventually, as soon as you, you tell yourself to calm down a little bit, and eventually you stop rocking and you just feel yourself floating. Just wildly. Almost like you're in a zero gravity, just spin simulators. In an empty vastness mm. of white with little black pinholes every every so uh, vision, but it's awfully eerie and quiet. And you can hear like muffled muffled somethings in the background that might be words, but you just can't make it out. And occasionally something goes out like, "You're mine." Hello, I seems your. Especially off the grid. Hi. So, I'm getting some interference, huh? <laughs> a little notice uh, pops up. If you'd like to place a collect call, please contact Hospitality and we can arrange for your personal communication needs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I kind of figured something like this would happen. Well, shit. Hmm. <laughs> looks out of sight. Back with you in a moment. <clears throat> you you fall, 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 fall down through white, through gray, through black, through a shot of blue and bubbles, and finally you land your body like. <gasps> <laughs> You cough and a bubble pops out. Ugh. I pop the bubble. Okay, well, Ronya gets up, he walks um, uh, out of the meditation room, and he goes to put on his uh, uh, his clothes, uh, his pants, and uh, his... They have been neatly cloak. folded. <coughs> and they smell slightly of lilac. That's... Interesting. Run your shrugs. There's a little business card it. saying complimentary laundry service via Dirk Raidrim's gnome sh servants. Mm. Okay. Ranya puts on uh, the pants and the cloak, but he doesn't uh, bother with uh, the leather uh, leather vest that he had for other under armor. Mm hmm. And uh, he. Uh, goes over to the door, looks over at uh, uh, Pink Ball. I guess he pulls on it. Oh yeah! Before you leave it, it as you're about to leave it, it tinkles above you, like ding, 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 as if it's if, as if it wants your attention. Mm, he looks at it. Just sits there. Ding, 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 ding. Occasionally, like it like twists and he vibrates. He touches it. It spools around your finger and descends with your finger. Oh, okay. He places it inside of his pocket. And uh, does the door open? Oh yeah, the, the tube opens as you approach it with the key. Awesome. Uh, he walks out and he looks around for either Dirk or an attendant or one of the nurses. Whichever he can find. Nope, all you see is a will-o'-the-wisp that just flit in about down the hallway, just... Mm. He Occasionally one down. passes by you and forms a question mark. Hmm? I would like to place a call if uh, you have an area for that. Nods. Uh, offers you its tiny little incorporeal hand. Rania takes it. You, you pop into the lobby and just in a chair. Hmm. Dirk there? Oh yeah, he's just sitting there, like, look, staring at the gold, like, hmm, what do I, what do I do with this? Hmm. Uh, 
Fuck, I forgot my mask. Oh. Yeah, he looks up at you. Oh, so you are a ghost wise. I thought so. Run your squints. Do you know of my kind? Of course I do. I've been around for millennia. Hmm. I know. Three, per three to be precise. Hmm. I may have to ask you sometime what you know, but right now I kind of have a uh, pressing call to make. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we do have a system for that. Uh, we just need you to point out... Um, now, question. Is it a deity or a uh, civilian or perhaps quote-unquote royalty you are trying to contact? Deity. Deity. Excellent. Uh, do you know their proper name or perhaps an alias they go by? I know Actually, first both. of all, we need their, we need their domain. Uh, domain. The god of uh, light, then, uh, god of nature, uh, yes. god of God of... Winter and Death. Winter and Death. Okay. And uh, do you know the proper name of this deity? One moment. Oh. Da, da, da. I had it up. I thought I didn't need it anymore. Damn it. You know, I, 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 I can give you her proper name in my world if you want, if you roll a history check with, with advantage. Oh, you have uh, pro, uh, uh, her proper name in your Okay. Uh, I was just taken from, like, um, uh, 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 the... Wikipedia thing, but okay. Uh, history check then? Yep, with advantage. Yeah. Ah, out of here. I just pulled it up too. Oh well. History check. Run this, uh, like, kind of wiggles a uh, big finger inside of his ear to get some water out. Yeah. And. Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's a five. Yay. Advantage. Oh, 14, then. I thought you said you put your finger in here to wiggle it around. Yep. And that's an 18. Yeah, you remember her, you, you occasionally were there when she had private business, and you heard her being mm -hmm. mentioned by other small forest folk as... Hmm. Yanor. How do you pronounce that? Yanor. Yanor. Hmm. Her name is Yanor. Ah, yes. Hmm. Okay, and, um. Would you... Are you going to settle with the basic connection, or would you like us to speed up your connection for for only five years' service? I'll pass on a five years' service. Excellent. You will have a... You will have a... Five, you will have a six-minute conversation available. Mm. All right. Oh, boy. And here is the... Here is the charm you will need. He lowers the the paperwork he's filled out into the desk and out pops tink, a little wing amulet. He's like, here you go. Carry this on you when you enter the meditation chamber and your call will go through. He takes it into his hand, puts it in his pocket, and uh, he nods. Much appreciated. <laughs> he heads back to his room. And back to the meditation chamber. Yep. <sighs> he strips off his um, uh, his poncho, 
that's on the ground and uh, sits at uh, uh, um, uh, on the uh, uh, cushion again and once again tries to meditate. All right. And as you sit down and close your eyes, you feel the the charm disintegrate as you once again feel yourself floating up in the air. But this time, you feel yourself float up and then sit down on what f what seems like materia. So mm -hmm. you open your eyes and you are surrounded by trees made of smoke and light fog as far as you can see. But no sound. Mm. Not even the slightest of breezes or flapping of wings as you're used to. He sits patiently. And he waits for her to come. Eventually, you feel eyes burrowing into the back of your head and you turn around from the waiting patiently, and there she is, just sitting there, arms crossed in the kneeling position. Hmm. Like traditional Eastern, like, sitting on both knees. Hmm. Nice to see you again. You have been quite active, it seems. I try not to let moss grow underneath me. Hmm. You have questions. And apparently a time crunch. Mm. May have been be uh, better if I have done this sooner, but... <sighs> Things have been occurring at a much faster pace than I anticipated. Oh? Hmm. But... Like I said, time crunch. I'm sure that uh, you are reading uh, what has been occurring around me. For now, I have a few questions for you, if you would allow. I do not punish curiosity, young one. You are... Always, you always did uh, grant favor to the Inquisitive. One minute has passed. You have five minutes remaining. Mm, that's gonna get annoying. <clears throat> anyway, so my first question is: Is our deal still intact, and what were the conditions? Are they the same as before? And uh, another question besides, I believe that my second time coming to you uh, was for the healing of the maiden inside my party. I wanted to know if that was by your hand or confirm whether or not it was. Her hooded gaze betrays no emotion other than other than wistfulness, and she speaks aloud. The deal is the same as before, unless you wish to make some radical changes to it now. Do you not remember the words I uttered upon you imbibing my my promise? Mm, that I would return to your service? But as, but as before, my service was to you of a student and emissary before. You were my archerid, and you had me do work such. You also... There's a cruel smile on her face. You never listen. I, I'm sure you all know when you first found me, I was not in the best of places mentally. I must it remind. I must remind you 
that you are mine and mine alone and you will stay with me for as long as I deem for you to remain on this mortal plane or the ascended plane as I am part of but apparently you forgot that so actually the deal is not the same as before it is changed because you came in a moment of desperation which which as you know me to be I took quite the advantage of so in answer to your second question she was healed, was she not? She was. Her precious vision was saved for future generations to remember and then immediately forget once she crumbles to dust. Mm. Just well, shit, man. <laughs> Hush you. <clears throat> mm. But was it you who made it so? Or was that someone else? Cruel grin. Mm. You've shaved. Yeah. You've never needed to shave before, have you, young one? Time passes, but... I thought it would be better if I was cleaned up a bit once I met you. Makes a better impression on some than others, I suppose. Mm. I don't really care much for appearances. I care more for consistency. Fair enough. Two and a half minutes but remain on your call. But to business. The... Does the old uh, condition still apply? If I Remind me, her... I am so old, I don't remember all of the conditions. You must be more specific, young one. I... When you found me, you tried nearly everything in your power to make me wish for life rather than seek death as a penance for my perceived crimes to the point where you waved in front of me the gift of true resurrection if I were to ever find Belladonna's soul is that still part of the deal? Of course, young one, of course. Run your nods. I will expect it to be so that if I were to find her soul and return it to you, you will revive her as she was before my slip up. Or in time provide me with the power to do so myself. Uh, yes, but first, you must find such. Well, he nods. I shall. <sighs> but... One minute remaining in call. Be sure to get all your important information. I still had three! <laughs> you had two and a half at last warning. <laughs> God damn it. Anyway. But about these feathers that have been appearing on me. Oh, do you I not use... find them comforting? Reminding you of your home and your eventual. It is an interesting change of pace, but I am I am ghost wise. I am him. Do you wish to change me from such? We are we are going in circles. I already told you the deal is not the same as before. So you want me to be changed along with the deal? You want me to be something else as I was? Have I not been of service to you in my former form? 
Perhaps you can be of better service in a different form. Have you not thought of that? I feel that if I no longer have the tongue of which to speak common, things will become a little more complicated. Oh, why? I will still be able to understand you. Thirty seconds remaining. I would ask that you remove this from me, but you likely will not. Leans into you. What will you give me in ex for biding for a biding of time? Mm. For staving okay. off the for staving off the eventual. What do I have that you do not the own? Do you wish to bargain with that that is not yours? I I got into this mess for letting someone else pay my price. I will not further my debts. She she bows her head and gradually floats away. Hmm. Well, seems you're stuck, young one, once again. And as she floats up, you you blink and you're back in the tr meditation chamber. Thank you for using the hospitality telecommunication system. If you would like to place a further longer call, feel free to, to talk about our rates of service. I'll pass. In inquiries available at the front desk. Just ask Dirk. Rania gets up and uh, stretches a little. <sighs> as much as I expected. Okay. Rania heads out of uh, the meditation room, heads back over to the food and eats a bit. Figuring that uh, the call probably drained him a little bit of some strength. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Bundle, what are you up to? He has been lazing in that little alcove. Tongue for... lolling out of the mouth like, uh... Pretty much. And he attempted to lazily try to catch a fish, but he didn't try that hard. <laughs> but, yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah, that that hammock sure is hypnotizing. He's just like swinging and back and forth and back. I'm not like, like, comfortable to hang in later. Like, dang, it's not a bad aesthetic when you think about it. Okay, then we're gonna cut to. Do -do 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 -do. In the tongue. Let's go with Talik. How's uh, what's what's Talik up to in the in the in between? Oh, he finally got done taking his bath. Got out, gave himself a good. Shake and stretch. Oh, dang. Ah, oh, now that was a dream. Time for bed. All right. You just roll over onto the onto the bed of hay. It has the option of covered hay or uncovered hay. So I there's like... Covered. All right. Yep, there's a little sack like you can attach to the hay and it will cover it and give still a, a rough, rough hewn but still lightly comfortable. Uh, reminds you of the of the old days on the farm. It's like uh. sitting on the burlap and like ah, nice and comfy. And as the aroma washes over you, you just snooze away. Meanwhile, in Feliano's room, after taking a very relaxing bath, <laughs> God, does she need it? Like seriously, after almost everything, God, yeah. She uh she uh she would uh, uh she would. Uh, she would just lay in bed, uh, in bed, reading one of the books from um from the bedside table. <laughs> yeah, I was choosing one of the bookshelves. There are so many bookshelves. Okay, give me one second. Do 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 do. I got a roll oh, for this picture. Yep. Congratulations! You're about to be possessed by a book. <laughs> God. Are you actually no? <laughs> <laughs> would you doubt that would actually happen? You know what? Considering her luck, 
<laughs> you find a book titled The History of Lenses for Vision Correction by Dr. Helena Good. <laughs> you know what? It's just a catalog full of different like lenses and like uh, frames, like the exquisite great horned owl design, the ones that look like they're literally jewels hanging from your eyes. <laughs> I respect the Aphelion to find a mimic book or a uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you enjoy this book or do you want to search for another? I want to search for another. <laughs> I, okay, yeah, I get it. I'm blind. And, uh, well, not blind. The I mimic clearly... book would be the monstrous book of monsters. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I love that book. <laughs> Like, ah, uh, just another relaxing... Oh, God, it's trying to eat me. <laughs> Remember to stroke the spine or it'll bite your face off. <laughs> roll, uh, roll animal handling to try and, uh, uh, to try, uh, to try and calm down this book. That one. Okay, so roll severity. <laughs> Nonsense. Okay, then okay, stash is gone. Uh, it's, uh... Oh no! I've got to get her. I've got to get her another book. Come on! <laughs> Come on! Oh! I'm, I'm waiting for my for my random roller to show up. It. I've got an entire. <laughs> I've got an entire Reddit post for this thing. Oh, oh my god! Oh, that's really awesome. <laughs> How do I roll a D three? Slash roll one D three. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Slash R one D three. Okay. Parodies of famous book. T What's that evil laughter? What's that evil laughter? Oh. Okay. Oh. Hang on. You know what's there? Build the suspense. Ah. <laughs> oh no, you find you found the book called Bible Black. <laughs> Ranya? No. <laughs> oh look, she found fifty shades of gray. <laughs> you know adapted what? From, adapted from the movie. You know what? If you do find that book, I'd rather you Fine, you know what? Fine, I'll go easy. You find, you find volume two of the Adventures of Nancy Druid. <laughs> oh God! I really wish I found that one. Damn it! That sounds amazing. Right next to the uh, the the concluding tome of Great Incantations. Yeah. And right next, and just above that, there's To Kill a Manticore. Dash would love that book. I would love that book. Is there To Kill an Earth Monk? Or... No, but there is Memoirs of a Genasi. <laughs> is there a book called... Is there a book called... Um, my my friend is turning into an owl. What do? Is there a book uh, also called the little the little trident? There is one flew is over the kenku's nest. <laughs> <laughs> God, you had fun with me. I didn't do a thing. <laughs> and then there's uh her hexes by Olivia Grace. Mm. Oh, boy. So which one catches your eye, Fel? <laughs> you can only choose one. Cur currently, you do have in your hand The Adventures of Nancy Druid, Volume 2. Volume 2? I never read Volume 1. Or have I? Have I? Well, you could search the bookshelf. You know what? I'm gonna find the the, the Adventures of Nancy Drew in Volume One. <laughs> Investigation. Here we go. <laughs> Turn that up. It's a pop pop book. <laughs> you think you see what you want, but then you pull it out, and it's the girl with the dragonborn tattoo. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Did you know that High School Musical made a book ad adaptation? And it's horrible? <laughs> oh boy. Let me guess, Juliana's going to get herself beaten up some more. No, I'm just trying to read a book! <laughs> you have multiple oh. books. I'm thinking of adventure with Feliana. Hold up, unless I get, like, Darkest Dungeon to, uh, 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 up in here, like, the player reads an unsettling passage. Like, oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> no, the player takes a left turn. Guess what? The player's dead. Shit! <laughs> Alright, um, I would choose... Do you want to roll uh, another investigation check? No, I'm good. Aww. Mem <laughs> All right, one more, one more, one more. That's better. Okay, you find the volume one of Nancy Druid. All right, and you do remember this, like, oh wait, I did read this. Let's see, volume two was out of print. <gasps> <gasps> Reading the the, the, the adventures of the. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you begin if reading it, time. and you skip ahead to the middle, like, I remember this book, yeah, he re yeah, Mama read this to me. <laughs> well, this became sad. Aww. <laughs> so, as she gets lost in the memories of her childhood, meanwhile, uh, well, Dash is currently unconscious and probably belching acid into the water tap, so... Oh, God. <laughs> I love you, Dash. I'd like to I kill you something, then. Uh, yeah. If um, uh, no one else has anything else. I got, I'll go after Roger. Actually, my thing involves you. Oh, it does? Uh, okay. Well, what do you want to do? <laughs> Okay, well, uh, Ronya slips back on his poncho, and uh, he uh, well, walks out of uh, his room, taking his key ball with him. And he goes over Dash's door first, knocks on it, hears him snoring. You don't know where anyone is. Oh. Oh, okay. You're in a hotel room where you all checked in separately. All right. Well, screw my idea then. I'm no, no, you could find. No, no, you could. You're not dead set against this. You, there is a way you could find out where they are. No. Right. He we've bound one of the will o' wisps. All right. Question mark. Huh. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm looking for the scaled one that came with me. Can you show me to his room. A little typeface, it, it starts forming words, it's wispiness. Is it an emergency? No. But I would like to speak with um, him, if he's there. Now you're looking for Dashigan, right? Uh, yeah, my, that was my first rule. I rule a d4, I hit Dash. Uh, but uh, I know that he's not there, outside the character, but Ronnie doesn't yet. So that's uh, going to lead to a dead end, and then he's going to go to his second option. The wisp, the wisp, was, uh, the wisp forms the phrase, one moment please, and it starts truly like... Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> the, the patron you are calling is currently unconscious or unable to reach the answering device. Please call mm -hmm. back in later. When they are awake, hopefully. Yeah. And enjoy your stay with the Fay Wild Hospitality. Uh, I'd, like to get in, I'd like to get in contact with uh, Bundle, the tabaxi man, uh, if that's possible. Is it an emergency? No. Okay. One moment, please. <laughs> burr, burr. And as you're lolling in the tub right. there, a wisp drops out of the ceiling and hovers in front of you. Uh, hi. How's, how's it going, wispy boy? It keeps trilling. <laughs> what do you want? He yells out. <laughs> He's like, screw it. Answer the phone. Jumps up. He jumps up and grabs it. Yeah, as you grab it, 
a like little wispy like version of Rania appears in front of you. Like it looks like he's made of smoke. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's oh. barely there in Corporeal. And you see on your end, you see a wispy version of Bundle in all his glory, sopping wet, <laughs> dripping wisp, and it's like. I was thinking it would have been really awkward if he was uh, actually in. The... Oh, oh, he. I'm pretty was. sure he is. <laughs> he is. Oh, no. I said, I said, and I quote: "He jumps into the water in all of his glory and does a a nude, nude dead man lay black in the water." Oh, hello, so he... bundle. Had a bad time. Huh? What are you talking? About? Oh, how much of me can you see? <laughs> You can see almost, almost down there, but the wisp, the wisp stops there and like refu- It does your legs, but it refuses to go there. Okay. Let me put it this way: if uh, if you were a halfling, probably tufts of hair from below. He looks down, and realizes what's going on, and climbs out of the water <laughs> as he starts going for his clothes. All right, all right, all right. Hang on. Oh, what is it? What's up? You see Jesus wispy. Crap. You see wispy to tabax- to Baxi Tushy. <laughs> I, I, I thought you guys licked yourself clean. I mean, the the ladies do. And you help with that, Rania? This is really what this is about. <laughs> Uh, but I was wondering if you could give me a hand with something. Uh, sure. Just let me get dry, because I'm pretty sure they don't like walking wet cat around the around their little. Hall. As you as you walk out and approach the 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 clothing, uh, you walk through like a wind wall that just blows you completely dry. You just. Just poof out as you get to your clothing. Oh my god, he's going to find his little puffball. <laughs> this, this I'm just is... going to have a sight when he sees him. This oh no, you just be... you see as the wispy version of Bono's like, <laughs> just poofs out and just a massive, like. <laughs> oh god. Oh my. So, uh, at this point, Bundle's like, well, this is annoying, but I... he. He pulls on his his shorts, or nice shorts. He pulls on his uh his pants and pulls his sh- shirt over his shoulder as he walks around with a wisp. All right, so w- am I meeting you somewhere? What's going on? They mentioned something about a uh, communal bathing place. I wonder if you could help me with something there. Oh, another bath. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right. You can roll. You can roll inside on that if you want. Sure. Eleven. Straight. All right. Uh, un- unlike most tabaxi, panthers really love the water. Cool. All right. Now the world's gone so. bad. <laughs> <laughs> so he walks out, and in his poofiness. And he he does his best to try to let it down, but it's not working. Mm. And he looks around for Rania. Mm. All right. Um. Uh, so. Um. Uh, um. I guess so we're, well, we're both heading to uh, the the bath the bathing area. Yes. Cool. So um, um I guess uh, the will wisp is gonna show him where it is. Question mark. Yeah, actually, it just form as soon as you guys meet each other, it forms an arrow and points in a, in a, just down the hallway. Follow the quest marker. Uh, These will wisps are really uh, handy. Mm. Why do you look at the will wisp? Wondering if there's anything he has that he can tip it with. Mm. Uh. It it forms into the words no tips necessary. We are in slate. We are we are we bow to the will of the Fey. Mm. Enslaved. Ronnie attempts to pet it. You you pet it. Uh, good boy. You you are appreciated. You are loved. It reforms back into the arrow, pointing down the hallway. Okay. okay. 
Uh, um, Manya waves that bundle and he uh, heads over to the bass bathing area. Okay, what does the bathing area look like? Uh, Hmm? Uh, Bundle? Looks fine. You. Oh, God. He's heading. Bundle's head, uh, into the fifth dimension again. Okay, cool. <laughs> I have a little bit of a problem that um, I kind of need help uh, dealing with. A gnome appears around the corner. Do you require assistance? Mmm. <laughs> I got it. Thanks. I'm telling mm. you, those little gnomes are creepy. They just show up out of nowhere. <laughs> this one's wearing an apron and has is carry is pushing like a little like mop cart. Mm. Anyway, um run your heads in with bundle. Uh, I... Is that to the gnome? Uh, it has... No, uh, no. No, I'm talking to Bundle. Oh. To Ryan. Ryan. Okay. I have, um, a little bit of a with, uh, my goddess. I'll, uh, tell you when we're in the... Uh, in the bathhouse. Or in the bathing area. That is a very excited face for you to have, man. Good kitty. Anyway. Okay, so run your hands over to the changing room. Yes, I, I'm aware. Love water. But run your hands over to the changing room, and he takes off his poncho, revealing the feathers along his back. Yeah. Like I said, I have a little bit of a problem, and I can't exactly take care of it myself. I think that would be Arcana. Arcana. Dang. How do you keep rolling so amazing with Arcana? Jesus Christ. No. So you you know the thing, I guess. No, he doesn't. He does not know the thing. You're kind of shell shocked by this. Oh, you rolled with disadvantage. We are dealing with the Fey. A high uh, Fey. Wait, she's a Fey? You said she's technically Fey. No, I didn't. I said that she takes a lot of her stuff from the Fey. Okay, like her... you, you're. An... Okay, Bundle, I'll go. also say that you aren't familiar enough with this god to. To have that higher role. Okay. So at this juncture, like the fuck? How is with the pocket? You may have to go back to typing, man. Really? Is that bad? A little bit. Your your oh, robot, yeah. your artificial voice box is showing. Mm. Like Lady O was kind of, I mean, you know, kind of based off of uh, the Raven Queen, but. Uh, 
short version, I got some bad juju in me. Long version, get a tweezer and I'll start to tell ya. Run you go into the bathhouse and try to find like I don't know. Wendell can probably just roll a sleight of hand and pull them out with his with his with his own hands. Yeah, sure. Are you bathing with the mitts? Is that 12 or 17? Uh, you can't pull off the mitts, actually. Oh. But the mitts uh, do actually just still retain the shape of your hands, and you still manage to pull out a lot of the feathers fairly easily. There's still a couple that just can't you can't quite get, but it's mostly the smaller ones. The bigger one, the most expansive ones, you can get out. This is the tiny nubbins yeah. ones are still evading your grasp. Did they hurt? Uh, it's it's a little check. it's a little sharp pain every time one pulls out like a ting oh like something plucks a nerve every time you pull one they pulls one out. Mm -hmm. Bas uh, basically, what's going on? Uh, the goddess that I uh, serve under is uh, turning me into another creature to better serve her, I guess. Or maybe it's just her morbid curiosity. She would do this often enough with uh, creatures under her employ, but, uh, you know, usually it's seed to just enchantments before this. Like that, she has like uh, an owl bear apparently that she has that she enchanted to grow to any size. That thing liked to play with me a lot. And um, apparently all of her servants that she uses to claim souls can go just about anywhere. Kind of weird. But with this she's doing a full... That's my attempt not to ask him. Yep, that's probably a wise course of action. There was uh, someone who said something once. I make it a, uh, and I quote, I make it a point to avoid the attention of anything godlike, god-ish, or god of. Seems like a smart course of action, but I was kind of marked from the start, so yeah. No, I'm in it too deep now. It hasn't been all bad, but this is a new development. The, mm. No. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the payoff tends to vary when it comes to prayers. But yeah, apparently I am going a lot less halfling in the future if this carries on. Unless, of course, I can find, uh, uh she can, uh, I can find no. some way of changing her mind. Hey, guys, Which... I'm going to have to get off here for a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. We're, we're about to wrap up. Uh, yeah. Because we're getting this internet issue all wrapped up. Okay. Yeah, all right. I'll post the link in the, uh, for you and Dash to catch up on if there's much left over. Alright. Right. Okay. Um, anything didn't help. Well, uh, if you can get the, these feathers off me uh, when they show up, that'd be great. Plus, I think uh, Feliana can use one of these things for uh, uh, some of these four spells. So, if we keep collecting them, um, um, we have like a free spell component at the very least. Great. Uh, well, we have a uh, a source uh, for spell components, at least. One just scratches his back a little. Uh, uh, so until uh, she has uh, 
Uh, until I have something that she would want uh, uh, that I can convince her to cease this or uh, stop the progression of this. That'd be great. It does make me wonder, though. I wonder how many she's done in the past like this. How many more halflings she has that were used to be halflings that are now just owls. Makes me wonder. If she can help. Um. I would advise against it. It's, uh, I have another deal set with her, and I would rather not, uh, I need to be involved with her at this point. I don't have a choice. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Better. There you go. Okay. Oh, okay. Jeez. Would you like to ask, uh, your, uh, um, uh, see what you typed in, then? All right, so... Well, but here's the thing. My deity will help, but it will be a same situation as yours, except she likes things of the material like a lot. Okay, so I got... And you you went into the fifth dimension, dimension again, man. The treasure that I have been so busy... The uh, wonder of McDonald's Wi-Fi. Yeah, tell me about it. So, okay, there you go. So, yeah. Uh, if I ask my deity anything, it'll make me go get something. So she want something material. I'm sorry, man. I want you to get your damn internet back, too. <laughs> sorry, sorry, dude. Artist. Okay, so she wants. Uh, is, so your deity would likely want a trinket of some sort. That would be insanely hard to get. My goddess went through that phase too, but she uh, cares less about those things anymore. More or less, she values knowledge or anything. Or servants. Servants are nice. But uh, I don't think involving your goddess would uh, help me in any way. Besides, I still need to be under her employ. We have a uh, arrangement that I cannot back out of. Or rather, I need to go see through. Maranya um, uh, kind of clams up a little bit at this. You remember um, um, you remember what I said before about my mistake? How when I was young because because I followed my mother into the forest while she was casting a ritual to appease her ancestral spirit she lost concentration and she died because of it I see hello Rather, there you go. welcome back Dash Oh, hey, Dash. I turned from nap. Yay. Okay. We're almost done anyway. But, uh, Figured. yeah. Uh, there's a little more to it. Basically, my mother, my adopted mother, she was prophesied to lead my people to a new age, to a new prosperity. But because she died, 
things kind of went to shit. Our old enemy, or rather our old allies who became our enemies over time, started to attack our people to want vengeance. They started to change more of us into them and after a while there was less less and less less of the hin and soon enough our ancestors got involved thinking that they are the only ones suited to combat the threat of our own enemies they started to take the lives that should be our young into their own. As you are saying this, Dashkin runs in from the hallway like, I got Paige. There was this will the wisp wouldn't stop bothering me. Oh. Hello. How's it going? What'd I miss? Um... Uh, Meanwhile, Phil's just reading uh, reading the, the Adventures of Nancy Druid. <laughs> There was a oh, yeah. Ronnie thinks to himself whether or not he wants to either make a joke or do a recap. I fell asleep. I'm not sure if it's still today or the next day. It's still tonight. Okay. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> there's a gnome it? there's a gnome in a lifeguard outfit at the top of like a chair saying, It is currently almost midnight. <laughs> So you should probably go back to bed. It's uh, uh, not urgent, man. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> and he does so. The will of the wisp comes in, gives you, gives Ryan you the finger for making her work so hard. <laughs> what did I miss? Uh, a will of the wisp. Yeah. <laughs> I got a, I got the bird flipped off to me by a fireball. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, Bundle's gonna take this exposition that you've given him and say, "Well, the best I can say, dude, is one: if there is any way that we can help, please, please let us know. Mm. I mean, as as much as I find you so, at some days rather." Grading. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Rania looks back at Bundle when uh, like stares at him for a moment. You know how you say you want to keep out of the way of gods? This is the yeah. business of gods. Well, I'm in the business of friends, and whether they're with gods or not. Aww. A will of the wisp sighs out the side. <laughs> so again, if you need any help, I will do what I can. It might not be much, but I will at least keep do do the best that I can. Ronnie thinks, nods. Basically, I need my deity's help to revive my adopted mother's spirit. She is the key to reversing all that came from my mistake. She will be the one to lead my people back from ruin. And hopefully the ghost wise will the hin will rise again. But right now our numbers are so depleted. I really don't know if there's any hope anymore. Not with our ancestors making stillborn with every fail attempt that they are to reincarnate ourselves and skinwalkers walkers killing our people uh, left and right. Bundle, you tried to say something? Did 
did the McDonald's Eat Bundle. Necromancers, run your grits of teeth. That is not an option. You do not... I would not do that to her. Well, why not? I mean, you want to talk to her, don't you? You don't necessarily have to raise her body. Yes, I do. That is the point. That is why she, uh, I accepted my goddess's price. I need true resurrection to bring her back so that she can lead my people. Well, the best I got for you is if you're looking for something like that, you'd have to find one hell of a cleric or a god, uh, or a god of, of life. And no offense, I don't know any of those. I have a god of death. She will do. That's You might as well be talking to a necromancer then. Not necessarily. That, that, this is what Bundle just thinks in the top of his head. She has proven herself quite vehemently that she is fully capable of performing true resurrection. Run your shutters. Many times. I'm rolling insight on that. <laughs> Motherfuck. <laughs> what is that supposed to get him? Um, something. Mm. Like, at least a half truth. Anya has died before. Yeah, don't mm. let Talek know about this. Unless of right now, he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bundle's gonna just raise a brow. I take it you're speaking from experience. Not something I like to talk about a lot, but yes. For quite some time, I wasn't allowed to hey, remain. That's not easy. But I think she's, uh, uh, she's uh, gotten over the whole bring me back thing over and over. And now she wants to look into keeping me permanently. The next time I go down, I mean, I'm likely not going to be coming back. Oh, so that's a thing. That's a thing. He's going to try and lighten the mood. Mm. I know that's how to shrug. Death or glory. Oh, boy. Funny how when I actually... Ah! It means I. It means uh, I kind of was for a time, but no longer. It means if I die, I. Uh, <laughs> please don't try to kill me. <laughs> the fine print is important, I promise you. I don't get. I don't get a respawn this yeah. time. This is just this. I haven't even met your sister yet, so. And with that, the gnome on the little lifeguard brother. All right, pool's closing in two minutes. Ronnie gets up. Uh, besides, man, uh, uh, I'm I'm gonna be a druid, but um, unlike like well, what you may have heard, not all of us are into relationships with the animals. 
Oh god, that second line. <laughs> Sad thing is, he's being serious. Oh boy. One would kill you from uh, for your antics, and the other would keep you alive from the bottom. Bottom up. Neat. I'm. Why you scratching the chin? Euphemisms! Euphemisms are, are strong with this one. <laughs> hmm. I may have to reconsider my, uh, uh, pre... preception? No, pre... prerequisitions? No, something pre... Preconcepts? Preconceptions? No, not the right word still. Closer, but no. Presumptions? Anyway. No, still not the right word. Anyway. Pre-gaming? <laughs> Always pre-game. Have to laugh longer. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll run your stretches. Alright, well, uh, I guess I'll see you tomorrow then. I imagine I have some business with the courts tomorrow. Yes, more than likely. The best I can say is try not to let this situation get to you. Yeah. Mm. All right, and you guys exit the pool. You grab your clothes. You head down the hallway. I mean, we're gonna cut to Dash. Did you do anything on your way back to your room? Dash hmm. the room. <laughs> the on room the way. On the way back to the room after being woken up by a will of the wisp, he tries to eat one of the will of wisps. Mm -hmm. Nothing that nothing that jumps to mind because I would need more information that I missed. I don't know. He isn't a... Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah. You dropped off when in the middle of uh, Rania's attempt to place a collect call. I think I dropped off in the middle of bath time, actually. Okay. But in terms of dash related things that he would need to like, hop to, he didn't really miss much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, he was, gonna, I thought he was going to try and talk to Fell or something like that or whatever, but it's not necessary. If you're just going to head back to bed, it's fine. We can wrap up it, here. It, it sounds like you guys wanted to wrap up, so. I mean, I'm good with. I do, to be honest. But, yeah, it's Plus really great. Fun. Yeah, yeah and, and, I was going to wrap up in Fell's room. You're like, oh okay. my god! The, the, the adventures of Nancy... Uh, of Nancy Druid. <laughs> Maybe I'll start... You're going you're to love hearing about those names in the video, Dash. <laughs> Maybe I'll start reading To Kill a Manticore. Oh my god. A Genasi... <laughs> Memoirs of a Genasi. Memoirs of Genasi. Sorry, sorry. Don't forget about the girl with the dragonborn tattoo. <laughs> uh, the great tattoo. So yeah, I kinda we... Wish, I kind of wish I read uh... some of now, but it's too late. So yeah. Um, yeah, Dash heads off to bed. Bundle, you head off to your glorious, glorious watering hole. Uh... Rania, you head back up to your to your little new new age settlement, and meanwhile in Felia, uh, Talik's still fast asleep. He's got a slight snore going on. It's like very high pitched whistling snore, and uh, and meanwhile Fel is just sitting there with like a flash lantern, reading over volume Great two tobacco. of Nancy Druid. Getting slow. I think it would be more of rat folk and men. Oh, are you sure you're not? You haven't made yourself a fort out of the blankets and like reading it, like uh, like hiding it from your mom when you were a kid. <laughs> you bet you're sorry. Yes, I did that. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's just sitting there reading through volume two. Like, wow, 
I knew that old clock hit a hit a fucking uh, Eldritch Knight <laughs> cult. I knew it. I, I could have been Nancy Druid. <laughs> <laughs> If you if like I, to learn, if Pilliana, I wasn't a bard, <laughs> I can teach you my <laughs> Oh my god. I think there's a meme about that. <laughs> Would you like to hang out with the bad ones? <laughs> no, not really. Well, that's Listen, a Pilliana, good... Pilliana, uh, as a druid, I meet all of the criteria for a Disney princess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, uh, as she's just bundled, uh, as she's just buried under the covers in a little like tent of sorts, using her flash lantern to read through volume two like an excited little kid, we're gonna fade out to executive producer Brett the Wiz BS. <laughs> Tune in next time for more dynamics of good and evil. On and I vacation. I fall asleep next time. Yeah, and yeah, fell would have been just like. Wow. The fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna wrap up the here. after credit scene. Like Great. in my life, not in Nancy Druid. <laughs>